Why? For Christ's sake, why? Hey! Why? Why? Because we fucking can! Because we fucking can! And if we can, we do! And if we lift our heel off their necks now, they'll just come at us! Because we fucking can and we fucking will! They're already coming at us, Ryan. They're already after us. I don't know what else to say. Live from the biggest little city in the world, this is the Rational Mail. And Lord knows we need to stay in the secret bunker today. Keep your head down until uh, November 6th. It's the only solution. Got Ryan Stone on tap. He's already here, which is amazing because usually he comes in really hella. Oh boy. I'd like to state for the record, I am in no way a theologian. I did not go to seminary school. I only know how to piss them off. Comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. That's my mission statement here at the Russian Man. superfluous right now men are superfluous right now you will hear women say i don't need a man but i want a man it's no longer about a need sorry it's who no, says fatherhood superfluous every last person i have ever done a, do a an interview with okay here's the thing Sir, no, wait a minute. You, you said every person you've ever interviewed said fatherhood is superfluous no I, no I meant what i meant is that every person every woman that i have ever interviewed at, and depending on whatever the show is is that they express a, a pretty much the same thing verbatim, which is, I don't need a man, but I want a man. The reason why they don't need a man is because they have gotten to the point right now where we have put women into the workplace, we put women into, into univer major universities right now. We have essentially taken the side of women's mating strategy where they need a man who can provide, protect, and provision, and we said, ladies, men are bums. Men are either abusive or they are uh, Homer Simpson, they're that buffoon stereotype that we see in, in all the in, in sitcoms. Or they're incompetent, right? What are you talking you about? Want to be <laughs> what are you talking about? If you cannot change the girl prior to marriage, forget about changing her after marriage. Because marriage is very well known to make things worse, not better. To make things more complex, not simple. See, before. I was out with my fiance, my man, and I was with my friends and we were having a nice social, uh, you know, time together at this beautiful cafe overlooking the Darling Harbour. And then my man decided to say a joke. And when he said the joke, all those hundred people that were sitting there, nobody laughed except me. His Juliet. And I said, look at my, my, look at my Romeo, it's so sweet, he is so beautiful, look at him, he, he is like honey, this joke so funny, ha ha ha, nobody laughed. After marriage, the same man, Romeo, tells you the joke at home, and then Juliet says, next time you say this joke, I will nail you on the wall. Marriage changes things. Prior to marriage, when I used to go and get my girl from her parents' house, I'm all dressed up nicely. Thought for young women out there. Eve was the final being God made. The woman was the pinnacle of creation. So the serpent tried to bring her down first. And the devil will continue to try to bring you down by tempting you with things that are less than what you're worth. Every sin is the devil trying to get you to forget your value. Don't give yourself to a man until he stands up in front of all of your friends, your family, and in front of God himself and says he will love you until he dies. We call that marriage. That's what you're worth. Know your value and don't settle for anything less. Wife. 
Those are your kids. That's your responsibility. And if you don't provide for them, you're worse than an unbeliever. If you're not willing to work, pay your bills and pave your way, you're not a man, you're a boy who can shave. That's who you are. So what we do here is we build men up to bless women and children. That's what it means to be a man. You're not around real. That's what it means to be a man. No men, unless the women and children are blessed because those men are around. Those men make the world a better place for women and children. He chose poorly. A man, 6'4", six, 6'2", six, is fine. Or like a retired NBA player. NBA player? <laughs> I just want somebody, like I want his life to be the Bible. Like I just want somebody who's so obsessed with the Bible and so obsessed with Jesus and who understands and like we said, like who can teach us things. Yeah. Like I want my dude to speak in tongues and oh have God, tattoos. I just want yeah, like, a up that. like a nice mm. classic man. I want somebody who will literally protect me and beat someone's butt if they need to but also we'll sit there with compassion and just like a good-hearted man that's what a true man is there yeah. has to be that dichotomy it's the same thing with feminine women too there's always a dichotomy yeah. there's a softness yeah. and a strength yeah. and for men being masculine is being able to beat someone's butt you know maybe not physically but like being a protector and like doing what he needs to do to protect his family but then also being soft enough to like be able to tend to his wife's feelings and like to be a good loving father yeah. to his kids yeah. like there's got to be that dichotomy yeah. you want to be married good question i heard that's the lover boy tactic we'll talk about that in a little bit but and that's an interesting question because this in just younger me younger me would say no absolutely not and the reason younger me would say no is because I'd come up with all the arguments that there's no legal advantage really, and the woman can wreck you, and you can lose all of your things, etc. What's the point? I just like to say, ironically, he's just admitted to being married about what this week. <laughs> I don't want the government involved in my life, all those kind of arguments. But as I get older, maybe I'm getting a bit softer. Maybe I do think sometimes you need to make a decision based purely on love and have the faith of of love and faith in your love enough to to say i don't care what the government's going to do about this because i truly believe in us and i think we're going to make it so would i get married perhaps some point yes in the future i might get married yeah I, I, i'm not against marriage like i used to be i used to be super against it and i think that's because i grew up in a environment where everybody was divorced i feel like i'm taking crazy pills Wait, how many uh churches are there versus starbucks <laughs> uh, there's sixteen thousand starbucks in the u.s you know how many churches there are? Uh, is it double that? 400,000. <laughs> so think about that. When you, when you think about Starbucks, you're like, they are on every corner. And then mm -hmm. McDonald's, same thing. There's 13,000 McDonald's in the U.S. There are 400,000 churches. Yeah. And so the crazy part is, what I got to sit down with a guy named Philip Hackney. He's the former chief counsel to the IRS for religious tax law and religious tax code. And he blew my mind. Because when the 1913 income tax was, was brought in, they really looked at the nonprofit sector and they kind of defined that. And they said, this group needs to be safeguarded. They shouldn't pay taxes. And so at that moment in 1913, there was 12,000 nonprofits. And religious nonprofits are nonprofits. They're just religious. So right. You have secular with nonprofits or, or with the religious exemptions. So in 1913, there's 12,000 of them. And so they build these laws to kind of protect them and nurture them because that's where kind of civil society wants to help each other right. is in the nonprofit sector. Today, there's 1.8 million nonprofits in the U.S. And so you see this explosion of nonprofits and religious nonprofits, and you got to ask yourself why. Not condemned by the choices that other people have made right. in their own lives. Right. So, for example, the, the, this supposed statistic that 50% of marriages end in divorce, which, which is basically made up, but let's just pretend that it's true for a moment. It, it's like, okay, but that's not my marriage, okay? Because Wrong. I am being, that statistic is being weighed down by a whole bunch of people who, who, who made all the worst choices and their marriages failed very quickly. And so that's how you come up with a 50% statistic. But if you do basic things, like, for example, if you're religious, if you, you know, 
uh, if you just uh, spend time together, if you, you know, if you, if you listen to each other, if you're honest with each too, other. Ryan. The great advice Andrew Clavin gives to young men, don't have sex with people who aren't your wife. Right. <laughs> don't, don't do ba- if you do basic advice, things, yeah. if you do basic things like that, you your, your chances of not getting divorced are, are, are much, much better. What have I ever done to you? So you don't, just the, the fact that this has happened oh, to God, so many other people really has no bearing on you and your own life. I feel like what I have bath and battery acid. <laughs> I have always said nice things about you. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Are you, are you and yeah. I, the one, you know, I'm kind of glad I ended off with the, well, with that one, but like also the, um, the one with the sort of coming to the realization of like how many nonprofits there actually are. And like, essentially there's just, it's churches, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Right. Today's Sunday. Right. So like I thought, hey, why not? Um, but uh, if you go, I, I don't know if you've ever you, you ever been to Florida. If you ever go to Florida on a Sunday. I mean, I've been to Florida once or twice. Yeah. Once or twice. Yes. <laughs> you go to yes, a long, many, many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Sunday. Welcome to Sunday Mass. And by the way, thank you for that three hundred dollars super chat. Uh, in fact, I'll throw that up there again. That was too too kind of you. Just some dude. Just some guy. Thanks again. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say is uh, if you go to any strip mall or you go to any high school auditorium, probably right now. I would. Well, maybe it's a little late, but like in the morning on Sunday mornings in Florida, <laughs> especially Central Florida, <laughs> you will really? find a religious service going on at that time. <laughs> There is a seed church that's going on right there, man. So, oh, that's wild. Oh. But no, you actually got me thinking on that one. Yeah, a lot mm. of this is it really just the original grift coming back? Mm-hmm. Like, does Jesus need to start? Are you Jesus in this parable, flipping tables, whipping money lenders? Yes, that's me. Yes, I'm. I'm. I am the. I'm the Christ figure in this one right here. And here's a question oh for God, you: Will just compare itself to Jesus Christ? <laughs> did, and did you watch that whole Matt Walsh rant? Rant? That's the most of it I've seen. Oh, this one? Yeah, I'll, yeah. Well, I'll replay it again. I was I wanted oh, no, to no, no, no. My, I had a question though. Does he ever actually smoke that cigar or is he just holding it for a fact? No, oh my god. No, he's like the whole time and he and they looked like so uncomfortable in that video. It's for people who don't know what we're talking about. This is um this was a video and I'm I'll play uh, the guts of it here in a little while. We we will opine on some of these things. <laughs> um but uh by and large they're sitting around um the whatever the daily wire newsroom i don't even what to call it it's just it's a set it's obviously a soundstage and it's candace owens michael knowles uh andrew clavin uh jeremy boring who is very lives up to his name um and uh let's see ben shapiro and matt walsh and it's like a meetup basically yeah exactly (laughs) it's the uh it's all the usual suspects you know it's like you know (laughs) give me the keys you cocksucker (laughs) i I want to to line all of them up and make them say say that line (laughs) oh dude that would be so funny (laughs) give me the fucking keys guys (laughs) oh and just running their mouths for like running out the clock is now how you call it running out the clock Filibustering. In the void. They're filibustering. That's what they're doing. But I, I think what's interesting. Yeah, oh, Candace Owens was on there. Yeah, Candace Owens was on there too. And yeah, you're right. Exactly. Uh, Michael Priest she looked very uncomfortable. Yeah, I think the I think her days are numbered at Daily Wire. She has a I'm pretty sure she has a contract. And as soon as that contract is up, I will guarantee you she is going over to Tenant Media. And if you don't know what Tenant Media is, I will explain. I'll be happy to explain that to you today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tenant Media is a new I don't I want to say that they're a competitor. Yeah, they probably are. They're a competitor to to Daily Wire, but they're uh, it's uh, it's uh, let's see, uh, Tim Pool's on it. Uh, I'm fairly sure Destiny's like or some of his crew is over on that too. Uh, Lawrence Southern just they just produced a uh, Lawrence Southern just produced a uh, a video on the was it Modern Love or some shit like that. It and came this thing out, just like, started in the election year. You're saying? Yeah, imagine that. Wow. Wow. (laughs) You know, it just happened to work out that way, right? Three guys in their garage just decided, you know what? Let's take all the biggest names in. I got a crazy idea. (laughs) Wild. Let's build a computer. (laughs) Today's episode is brought to you by Inference. Yeah. (laughs) The letter I. Yeah. I was going to say. So, yeah, they. um, I also, I'm also, I, I think I sent you the, uh, the audio of Sam Drismala, the guy from the DNC, who's like essentially this subversive, who's trying to like push himself into the, uh, I don't say the manosphere, but sort of the influencer sphere in general. And of course that what they want to do is uh, the long and the short of it is, is there's a, a, a 
collaboration, let's say, between the Democrats. And I think probably a lot of Republicans are just sort of playing along with this as well. But it's this sort of long game that they've been playing because they're afraid that the red pill is a gateway drug for the black pill. And the black pill leads to got young men voting for trump <laughs> like, oh yeah you can't not in my group <laughs> yeah so i thought it was interesting I, I i watched some of that and it's it's funny to see how many people are just sort of coming out of the woodwork and they're it's get they're getting to the point i think that when you get closer to the election time when you get closer to like november 6th here in the united states um the closer you get the more people don't care if you know <laughs> like it's like the mask comes off somewhere around august <laughs> and they're they're just fine if you know already but dude yeah. i can't wait this election can't come fast enough i can't wait to get back to just a bunch of guys talking about our dicks and having fun right i know i know We've gone I'm... from miller light to 100 hutley street i don't know if you guys have that in the states that was our canadian evangelical morning show oh really any kid who's ever had to sleep in for breakfast no. I always watch 100 Huffy Streaks. He didn't want to get out of bed, and that's all that was on. Yeah. I I think this, I mean, I know when I when I brought this up, I said, hey, what topic do you want to do? Like we were we were talking on our, our Twitter feed, and I was just like, what topic do you want to do? And then of course, out of the woodwork uh comes Lila Rose and uh Chase and everyone else. I'm like, do we really want to do another religious thing? Because like we've, I've done these for I, I think I did one of, uh, just like two or three episodes back. And I can't do these topics on Access Vegas because like the girls that are on the show, they're like they either their eyes glaze over or you offend them because they're like, really, they they know that they're like their thoughts, but <laughs> but they don't want to be called thoughts <laughs> and they know that Jesus doesn't like thoughts. <laughs> and so you can't really say anything about them. But um, but uh, I will take so I've, I haven't done a show with you in a long time. So it's like, I think either just do it. Hey, just do how it. long has Ned been without breaking a cast or a pin or anything in his leg? This is awesome. He's getting better. I, well, he has. And yes and no. So, Again? Damn it. so October was when he was attacked. October 26th was when he was attacked by the Rottweiler. Jeez. OK, so they put the first pin in. Uh, we have him. He's good for about four or five weeks. And then he slipped on. We have a, a ramp that goes in and out of the, the, the back here. And he slipped on the ramp and he ended up bending that plate. And Which so is a thick his, plate they had in his leg. Again, yeah. his, his, I mean, I could show, I think I've shown you the x-rays. It's just, oh, fuck. I can't even believe he like, he survived that, just the pain. Um, but he did. They took the plate out and I had him put another plate in. But the problem is, is like now he had like an open wound for four weeks, five weeks, you know, where you can, like, literally you can see bone and tendon in the. the oh, little, so did he get infected or? The, the, the thing. No, it didn't. Miraculously, it did not get infected. I which we, you know, we were very paranoid about it the whole time. And then we got to the point just recently where they said, oh, okay. it was about like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And they said, we can pull the, we can pull the plate out now and then sew him back up, which I'm like, oh, thank God. So th that's what we did. Sewed him back up. And then uh, just about a week ago, two weeks ago, um, right. he re refractures it again. And this time it's because of the pins that they use to go into the, into the, the bone, right? Which was actually one of my first questions. I said, are you sure we want to do this right now? Um, so I pulled it out and it's, it's not as bad a fracture. So it wasn't hard for them to align it. And now he's in a hard cast, which is like, I'm like, why the fuck were you not putting him in a hard cast to begin with? Um, but I'm not a vet, so I don't know. They want him to be able to put like weight on it because that's what stresses the bone and it, it, it stimulates the growth. Yeah, so greyhounds are, are always different when it comes to like anesthetics. They're different to legs because yeah. they're always more courageous with thinner mm -hmm. legs. Yeah, I've always like a lot of vets uh, just try treating them like they're boxers and it's like it's not going to work. No, no, they're not. And they I mean, they have pretty I mean, their bones are actually pretty strong. It's just that they're very thin. Mm -hmm. And um, so when they break, they break. Right. So uh, so now he has this refracture. He's in a hard cast right now. Um, and oh, as far as, photos. <laughs> yeah, as far as I can tell, he's doing he's well, he's he's in much better like spirits because he's off. He doesn't, we don't have to have him on antibiotics anymore. His pain meds are down to like minimal, but mm -hmm. now the doctor's saying that they want to do like sort of a bone marrow procedure for him to speed up the, the healing because they want to get uh, like stem cells in there, which mm -hmm. is it's like the, the break itself is probably not going to be that bad, but they got to, yeah, it's spendy as fuck, but they also got to, um, they also have to like, take it from his like shoulder they have to take the bone marrow from his shoulder to transplant it to where his his bone marrow is in the break and that's gonna hurt like fuck i don't know I if imagine. Been, like even human beings when they get a bone marrow transplant <sighs> yeah so he's not gonna be in good shape here in probably about another week because he's gonna we're gonna just do the bone marrow thing they wanted to do another even a more expensive one where they do a centrifuge and they just extract all of the uh the 
the uh, stem Same. cells that they want, but like that's you're you're talking the difference between a thousand bucks and like three thousand dollars. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, he's already in good shape. I hate to like, you know, make him feel any more pain than he already has to go through. But then again, I'm also moving to Vegas in the next two weeks too. Oh so. yeah, congratulations! I remember that was in the in the wings. Yeah. Yeah. He's. Uh, Look at he, you yeah, with your no about. winter bullshit. <laughs> ice cold up here man I, okay my wife hates the the snow because we've been doing this for a long ass time yeah. i like the snow because like i can take my sleds out when i have something to do in the snow it's great yeah but i've been doing so much work in vegas recently just in the last well year and a half ish um that i'm like it doesn't make any sense for me to like be here more than i am there right so i'm not Plus, giving you haven't lit one of your skidoos on fire in years no 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 <laughs> i miss old rollo man that was funny Please. Jesus Somebody be Christ. calling you a beta male, and you're like, "Hey, look at this stuff!" Hey, and it's man. like you escaping your flaming skidoo. <laughs> Dude, I have, I have, sh- I don't, I've never published these pictures, but like when I was have, when I had my, uh, it's uh, my skidoo summit. I have a, a 850, and it's a pretty powerful bike, and I end or well, yeah. sled, and I, um, I was running it on like racing fuel. <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that in a stock, stock engine. Um, and I ended up setting it on fire. And uh, I, I, I think I sent pictures of you guys uh, when I like, like I melted my shell on my legs and stuff because it was, yeah, yeah. It was like burning my legs. Um, and then uh, I, I was, na- I narrowly escaped like it, the thing exploding. Right? Um, and I didn't know how narrowly until my, uh, my garage guy, my, my mechanic showed me the fuel line that he had to replace. And it's like, he's like, if you'd have, if he said, if you've been like one or two more minutes of you, like just sitting around doing nothing, you would have exploded. Oh, <laughs> I was like, Oh fuck. So just live yeah, it on I have, I have, so I took pictures of the line, but I've never actually shown anybody the pictures, but yeah. it was, that was my, my most recent brush with death was, was what, four years ago, five years ago. Really? For mine it was when this guy started showing me a Matt Walsh clip. I almost died. Yeah. God. To be fair, this is a bit of like a, a parallel here, you know, dogs, gotten a big fight with something shouldn't have happened. The repair process has been horrible right at the time that, mm-hmm. you know, allegedly a DNS DNC slush fund starts bringing a couple nobodies in to mm-hmm. start bringing up 2012 manosphere talking points. Like dude, 70% of women initiating divorce is making the rounds right now. Oh, let's that's see. like 2006. Oh, yeah. Let's we are not condemned yeah. by the choices yeah. that other people have made right. in their own lives. Right. So for example, the, 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 this supposed statistic that 50% of marriages end in divorce, which, which Okay, so right I here, you. I hate you. <laughs> right here, like this is like this right here was the point of contention everybody had when I did this on um, on uh, on Twitter. Oh, like, the numbers. Like, what is he lying about? He's not lying about anything. I'm like bullshit. He's not lying. That's, that's fucking made up. He's he's full of shit right there, and I know yeah. he's full of shit because all I've been doing since August is talking to uh, Jim Sexton, a t- divorce attorney, who by the way is coming out in March in Vegas. Thanks, um, I like him. Yeah, he's a really good dude. He's been on our show a few times. He's, he's a good dude. Um, yeah. So, anyways, um, like when I when when we did the show with him and Andrew Wilson, who I like quite a bit too, um, when we did that show, uh, I, I'm I'm happy that that uh, that Jim did all the stats before we even got underway on that show, and one of those was the actual divorce rate right now in the United States is more like 56%. It's it's oh. like a little bit, it's like 6% over half right That's now. That's neat. Cause yeah, last I checked into it, it went down a little bit, but not because mm. people were staying married longer. It's just more people were not getting married. Right. And so it exactly. skewed the test gats. And even then only skewed them like 10%. Yeah. I love it. Here's the thing that I see a lot. And I'm, and by the way, I'm going to torture you again with uh, Alex from date psych a little mother. Bit oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but I, um, I was, um, I, I, I listened to him talk about, Oh yeah, this is a made up stat. I mean, shit. I mean, he just said this like two seconds ago, which is basically made up, but let's just pretend that it's true for a moment. Okay, right. so, so for this supposed statistic talking about like, Oh, that was just made up. I'm like, no, no ass hat. It wasn't made up. And I'm going to show you right now and put the put the lie to your bullshit right here. And then he's like, well, that's not really what I was saying. What I was saying was you can increase your chances if you're a good Christian like me. And if you, I don't know, go to catechism and you go and say seven Hail Marys and I don't know, you uh, sacrifice a, a, a goat to, you know, I don't know, whatever God you worship. And I don't so know, are you saying there's a magic pill I can take away. that makes all my problems go away? I don't yeah. actually have to work at anything. I just have to join the right club, get the right merit badge. 
Well, it's like they it's moving the goalpost. First of all, that was the first thing you did right there. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, no, I'm because all of his all of his defenders, you know, they come out of the woodwork. Right? And I don't know who's a bot and who's not, quite honestly, these days, because there's so, so many uh, just uh, like auto responders right now. You have that good system, though, where if you look at the only ones that they're following them are cam whores, then yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, yeah, I just saw that new thing where they, they de- dissected the Twitter algo. Mm-hmm. And it turns out it's actually you're actually losing growth by engaging with these fuckwits. You, you are that because you're wasting your time. With I mean, them. you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I, I'm it so hurts my heart to watch you not Bob prosper. Well, what else am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. I'm a nobody, but you got things. Yeah. No, I got, yeah. you got, I got things to know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have to catch myself. On, like you are the one who told me oh, you're, you're very red pill with, with women, but you're not very red pill with guys. I'll tell you what else I'm not red pill with. It's like engaging with bots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. Well, because you're like me, you're a social person. And in mm-hmm. social media, engaging with people, even if they're smaller accounts, it's the point of it, I thought. But apparently, mm-hmm. no, they punish you for being social. Oh, yeah. The autistic yeah. Well, and just yelling in the void. You got to remember that this is I, I remember, I think it was, yeah, it was the 2020 election of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to believe this was true, but I found out that later. I verified it later on. I heard this on like Alex Jones or some shit like that it was <laughs> the uh, the Wu Mao army. And they oh. had like, all the, uh, I don't know, at least room full of uh, kids on cyber cafes or something in like Wu Mao, China or province in China. I mean, I don't know where it is, but they called it the yeah. Wu Mao army. And that, but basically what it was is these guys would go and uh, make just multiple accounts, oh, like dozens and dozens of Twitter accounts. And they were just, their, their whole reason for being was just to fuck shit up. Right. It was just to go in oh, there. So they aren't even there as like paid astroturf. They're just there to cause yeah, chaos. They're just there. They're just agents of chaos is all they were. And oh, you know, was, that makes sense. Uh, China, China, China was supposed to have a billion dollar hacking army. And I don't know how it was all dispersed. The military, we got briefed on that back in 2012 when I was still in. Yeah. And I can well, see that being something to have there just for like chaos creation. Yeah. Well, of course, because it's it's all agitprop is what it is. Agitating oh, prop. God, so much but, of it is. And it's, I, I think one of the things is like, you know, the the, the Chinese people and you know, maybe to the Russians as well, they're very good at propaganda. I mean, they, they're just basically like, if you go and you look at like the, what is the, uh, was the people's revolution or something, you know, when, when mm-hmm. Mao Zedong was, was going, what, during the, was it the sixties, the fifties or sixties? I can't remember. But yeah. if you look at like, if like, I mean, it's like, even, even Jordan Peterson, like collects like propaganda art from that, <laughs> from that mm-hmm. time period. Right. That's how effective so, it is. <laughs> that's how, yeah, exactly. But they, they have a, a history of just propaganda. And, but the problem is, is, it was always sort of localized to that country because they didn't have the internet. Now it's like all bets are off, man. They can propagandize to any country they want to, anytime they want to, and they're very, very good at it. So, like when I when I see uh, like Alex Jones talking about the Wu Mao Army in 2020, I'm like, yeah, it sounds it sounds about right. But uh, you know, it's it is Alex Jones, so I have to kind of like verify a little bit. And now here we are in 2024, and we don't even need the Wu Mao Army anymore. We have AI. We've got copy G- no. copy AI and G- Cambridge you know, Analy- G- yeah, AI. Cambridge Analytical. That's how that Obama got in there. It turns out, by the way, Trudeau took Ob- like Obama used Cambridge Analytical to expand his reach to get the youth vote. Trudeau in Canada did it like ten times worse. So there's already businesses here just to just to agit prop your own stuff. And I know for a fact those Daily Wire guys use that. There's no way oh. they don't. Yeah, yeah. I well, I, I'll Are tell you, you what's you know you're a little bit you have a little latency on your audio right now. Um, that's what I was wondering what that was. All right, it's I'll like it's, I'm talking. it's like a bad it's like a bad seventies like like kung fu movie right now. <laughs> I well, kill you, you killed better. Allah, say it again. Better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're good. Okay. <laughs> um. So I um. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Where did I put this? Oh, crap. This one right here. No more Matt Walsh clips. I promise. No, I'll no, I'm this. not going to get. Well, we, we got. Well, hold on. We have to finish this one. Maybe out. one. The fifty percent of marriages end in divorce, which which is basically made up. But let's just pretend that it's true for a moment. It, it's like, okay, but that's not my marriage, okay? Because I am being that statistic is being weighed down <laughs> by a whole bunch of people who, who who made all the worst choices, and their marriages failed very quickly. And so that's how you come up with a fifty percent statistic. Okay, look at this. So and so they're sitting around. They got the they got the uh, the cigar Indian in the back there, <laughs> and they got the like the Cuban cigar like uh, collection going on in the back there. And it's like you look at these guys smoking these cigars, and you're like, 
these guys have never like smoked a cigar in their life. And you know, Candace Owens is just sitting there just waiting her, t waiting out her contract here. But yeah. if you do Must basic like things, like for example, if you're religious, if you, you know, uh, if you just uh, spend time together, if you, you know, if you, if you listen to each other, if you're honest with each other. The great advice Andrew Clavin gives to young men, don't have sex with people who aren't your wife. Right. <laughs> don't, don't do Andrew Clavin is on his third marriage. I just think I should point that out. If you do basic advice, things, yeah. if you do basic things like that, your, your chances of not getting divorced are, are, are much, much better. So you don't just the, the fact that this has happened to so many other people really has no bearing on you and your own life. You believe that? Well, I'll believe anything now. You your own life. Statistics? Oh, don't worry about it. Just smoking, drinking. Uh, let's see. What else? <laughs> what else is going to shorten your life that you should? You know what? Don't worry about it. Just pray hard enough and you won't have. You can smoke all you want. Dude, I just hate how demeaning that is, right? It's like apparently guys are walking around utterly clueless about the world. Have you considered talking to your wife and paying her a compliment? It's like, really? You don't think guys have tried that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I'm, and then you can always point. There's always one horrific guy out there who like beats his wife for no reason that you can point to to stop this stuff. So I get that. The problem is, and you see this constantly mm. where they take that uh, you can divorce in cases of abuse or it's like you can you can abort babies in cases of grape and, and incest. And you're like, look, it's not even a rounding error. There's three cases in the entire million case army of this stuff happening. And then they use that to push through this nonsense. It's just like, I know people aren't this stupid. Yeah. So I just don't know why they keep peddling it other than that's the only message you're getting out and you're hoping it's a bit of like a like a brainwashing gaslighting thing. That's mm -hmm. my only that's the only thing I could think. I, why think that. I, I liked some. I, I should go read some of these. I loved your tweets that you had after this. Was, what was it like? You know, just because I, you know, like there's no murderers in my neighborhoods. So. Oh, yeah. I'm not black. <laughs> Leave your door open at night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, that was funny. I, it, it, see, this is why you should do this, just for comic <laughs> comic relief. I mean, co comedy is. I mean, it's dude. Mm, it keeps the gun out of my mouth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and it's oh, beautiful man. because Matt will respond to you now because you're big enough. He won't respond to me, so I get to shit post with impunity. He only shit. He only responds to you when you call his kids fuck trophies. <laughs> 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 oh, oh Jesus, that's too funny god yeah i remember that uh no I, I he responds to me but only because i called him out on his bullshit statistics and that's because i think that and all, also by the way do i honest to god think that matt walsh is responding to roland tomasi no he's not that's his fucking handlers they don't fucking they don't do their well, own they all are. he just reads off the teleprompter you know that yeah. he's I mean, not like these big ass, like put it this way. If I was making the kind of money that these guys were making and I work for a big ass conglomerate like that, like a big, basically for a lack of a better term, a network like Daily Wire. Do you think I would be doing my own Twitter? Fuck that. No, <laughs> Farm this shit out. <laughs> There's always the chance, though, he's a raging narcissist and he just loves the idea of getting accolades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, me get funny. These, let me get some of these uh, super chats. I try to get through these. Thank you for that 300 once again, just some guy. I love you like a brother. Ka Ka Kyle, Tekken for pennies. Thank you. <laughs> Have you seen that, that yet? Was, Have I showed you that? You? That was at you, wasn't it? <laughs> is that your new show? Is that your like? Is that your video game show? Isn't it? Yeah, that's the video game show. Is the new one? And somebody showed me that uh, when I went on his co remember Creatrix's show with him, mm -hmm. and they showed the thing where Ryan's wife's a four and he plays Tekken for pennies, and I'm like, dude, that's a really good idea. And so I yeah. made a, like a two minute. <laughs> Oh my god, Tekken Pro Pro did it. You do anything? <laughs> Was it worthwhile? Yeah, and then bought Tekken 8. Oh, it's paid, it's paid dividends. Yeah. God. I love this. Okay, uh, Dandelion. Here's a, here you go. Uh, can you see please stop saying that you're a Christian? Come on, dude. Uh, you be in corn conventions. Yeah, the AVN. You could you could say AVN. That's fine. I go to the AVN expo, sure. Didn't Jesus hang out with prostitutes? I think there's something about that in there you know uh, alcoholics uh tax collectors uh something else like that now am i there like handing out religious tracts and trying to save these women's souls well i don't know i'm not because that's not going to happen i know that their souls are damned to hell right? mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no but i think what's interesting is like people always ask me that rollo what's your what are you what is your faith how can you say you're a christian how can you say how can you be married and say all this stuff and i'm like that's exactly why you should take me seriously it's like they've never heard of del rock that yeah. was his thing for a decade. I know. I like, and I can't. I, I know, sometimes I think maybe I get a little like two steps ahead of myself when I have to deal with shit like this because mm -hmm. it's like, bro, 
I wrote my, I have five books. The fourth book was called religion. And if you want to know what my take on religion is, my own personal take, all you got to do is read that fucking book. And it took me three, like, do me the solid, read my <laughs> shit before you come at me. I don't care what it's about. It could be politics. It could be lesbians. It could be fucking, I don't care what it is. <laughs> Snowmobiles. I don't give a flying fuck. Read the goddamn book at least. And it's not like, oh, he's trying to sell a book. Well, yeah. So is he, so is Ryan, by the way. Ryan, you're he, he, look look at this guy. <laughs> look at this guy. He sells he sells books. Yeah, I'm selling books right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah, see, I, like, see, he's got his in the back. I don't. All I got is like an ood right now. And I'm I have, gonna say that with the uh, loot looking thing there. Is that for the D and D campaign? That's, Yes, that's that's what happens when you go to the friendly village. That's what you hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Renaissance fair. No, that's a that's a Turkish dude. Um, I just got that. I have um. Well, I got I, uh, Doctor Red Pill. Doctor O's gave that to me. He's from Turkey. No. Uh, I also got that. I'm also been messing around with a bog llama. I I picked up a bog llama for about three hundred bucks, and it's I love that instrument, man. I'm like, where has this been all my life? Uh, got that, and then I got my bazookis too. Those are my like exotics, I guess. I have you ever a, use an ebo? An ebo? Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, I haven't, but I know what you I know what you're talking about. Like the little thing you hold over the strings to like make it vibrate, kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's like a violin a violin bow, but for your electric guitar. Yeah, I saw Corgan doing one once, and I'm like, dude. And I know for a fact he probably took it from like Rush or something. Yeah. Uh oh, watch out for the wrath of Walsh, Ryan. Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, they're not coming after you. There's no money in it. I don't want nothing. Yeah. <laughs> how's it going to, how's it going to benefit them? Thomas V. Thanks for that. Uh, do you think if trad cons understood female hypergamy, female solipsism and Briffold's law the same way that we do, would that change their views on today's current social order? You want to field that one before I do? Well, his, yeah. If you changed everything to adhere to what you want, yeah, things will change. It's, if aliens came down and attacked us, we'd unite yeah. as a universe. But Monkey like, what does that matter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say it's not going to make, it won't make any difference. They do understand it. That's just it. They, on some level, they understand exactly all of this stuff. They don't understand female. Hell, let me tell you something. Whenever I go and I start talking about like red pill, like basics, oh, mm -hmm. uh, how women are solipsistic. Uh, we talk about hypergamy. We talk about like, like, the guys that I showed in the, in the the video clips before we got started here, especially like guys like um, uh, Pastor Driscoll, like Matt, is it Master Matt Driscoll? I forget, forget his first name. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, yeah Mark, Mark Driscoll. Um, Mark Driscoll understands this on some level. It's just that he just refuses to accept it. He Like his way of dealing with it is just like you pray it, pray it away and be do better. That's all it is. And I wanted to also point out that uh, that's m more or less what Matt Walsh's response is. Do better. Just be better. Just okay. just just measure up a little bit better. Just do more for do more for uh, for women. And that because if mama ain't happy, God ain't going to be happy. So yeah. if you're not getting your if you're not getting your dick sucked, it's because God is angry with you. And how do you know that? Because your wife is angry with you. You're not living up to her expectations. You're not living up to God's expectations. Oh, where did where does Rolla pulling this from? Oh, I don't know. The book I wrote back in 2020 or I published in 2021, that one on there's a whole lot more to it in there. But people just simply don't think that these red pill guys even understand any of this. But oh, yeah, we've read more of their books than they've read of ours. Exactly. But, but I, I always hated that, too. It's the, the, the solution to live forever. Just avoid death. Like, thanks, coach. Oh, good. Good idea. Yeah. Hey, but if you talk to your wife and you're nice to her and you bring her flowers when you come home from work, she might want to fuck you. <laughs> where have this where has this been all my life? <laughs> I know. Drink water. Number three will surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as uh, like, uh, you know, hypergamy, solipsism, Griffith's lot, would they, if they understood it, I think a lot of them do on, you know, to varying degrees. They, it's just that they, no. their, their solution is, well, it's, you know, it's in the Bible. So just, you know, take the chance, go jump off the cliff. Their solution is to get a paycheck and not give a shit about who listens to their message. They don't mm -hmm. care. Everybody there is just, what is that? The lifetime cost, uh, the cost of acquisition versus the lifetime purchasing power, whatever, like the amount of dollars you're going to spend on Matt Walsh. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you he has somebody on staff who calculates that and how much ad spend he gets to use to get a customer where it's still profitable, or at least somebody handling them does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're talking to me about authenticity. Like, fuck you. 
you know, it's funny. It's like, I thought I wasn't like getting any Elon bucks until like, I thought, you know, that, that whole grift was over. I'm still yeah, yeah. getting Elon. I'm getting Elon bucks still really? a little bit, not what a lot, that? not as much as I got in the first, when they first dropped the, you know, here, you can make some money off of this shit. I mean, I still make like maybe a hundred bucks or like 150 bucks off of my, my Twitter. The vasectomy tweet is paying you a hundred bucks. A month. <laughs> no, no, that's long gone. Dude, that was almost a year ago. That was May <laughs> of last year. But yes, I am still getting, <laughs> still getting my residuals from that. Awesome. <laughs> you thought the vodka brands were good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. It's funny when like Elon pays you more than the residuals you have on like tr trademark brands you have. Uh, <laughs> Rolo, there is a Tradcon on the Blaze oh boy called steve dace a devoted christian who decided to also dip his toe in the manosphere or red pill content he had an opinion on masculinity after the shooting in kansas city of course he did why wouldn't he was the shooting in kansas city like an incel i don't like well i'm not sure what the details on that were all what i heard is that it was like some like like three or four black kids or something like that at a parade isn't that am i wrong about well that? i heard that the crowd tackled one guy and it turned out not to be him and everybody was calling him an immigrant for like and they mm -hmm. had to clear his name because he's like i'm not an immigrant i'm not a murderer you just well, had a bunch it, of good old boys tackling me well the, uh, and, uh, sorry here's your follow-up uh fyi bob i wish you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do an interview with steve dace i promise it will be fast he won't do it none of these fuckers will do it Tell him to come out here. I'll be happy to talk to him. No one wants to talk to me. Nobody wants to talk to Ryan either. We're like, I don't know. Well, I don't want to talk to anybody. To be we fair. smell bad. Do we need to like shower more or something like that? Because I don't understand it at this point. Uh, I promise it will be fascinating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> come on. Is this his handler? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talk to All Rolo. Don't do talk to me. Play his clips like Jordan Peterson. And if you get called, he will ask you to do him a favor. And that is do not lie to him. Uh, okay. I promise I won't lie to you. Call me up, bro, because <laughs> none of your other motherfuckers want to talk to me. Matt, well, all these, that, by the way, the only reason I even like use that video when they're, because the, the title of the video is like, oh, the red pill is wrong. I'm like, and the only person they mentioned and it is Pearl Davis. Of course. Ooh, is there anyone else that you know? Any, I don't care who it is. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be Ryan. It doesn't have to be anybody in Rule Zero. It doesn't have to be anybody. It doesn't have to be Rich Cooper. It doesn't have to be anybody. Anyone else. I don't care. Can you name one fucking name? No, they can't because they're not on the Daily Wire payroll. That's why. You know how it'd be so easy to bring Royce out of retirement and then tap into that mud sharking angle he was doing? You could totally take this place out. Yeah, I I think what's funny is like the, I I can remember reading and I kind of got turned off by uh, by uh, Royce and Chateau Hartiste when he went all like ethno nationalist like back in the day like all of people. <laughs> but it was his when he it was in 2009 and he kind of like I don't say jumped the shark but he kind of left the the game sphere per, you know proper and he mm -hmm. started leaning into like ethno nationalism and race race realism and all this other stuff and I was like that's not what I'm about and I mean I still liked it when he would do stuff on game or he do stuff on like intersectional dynamics I would read those but other than that I kind of just that's when I sort of tuned out and then um but now what's funny is like a lot of that takes that he was that I thought were just kind of like do I want to you know be involved with this now those seem pretty fucking tame oh yeah <laughs> in comparison to what I see like all every day online right now so, so I just yeah. you guys need a, a new old president normal. real bad just get this election over with yes just three years yeah. where everybody forgets we exist I would love that because there's like there's a real group of guys out there that actually are useful like they take yeah. the utility from this stuff. They enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And they're well, totally I mean, getting drowned out and they're getting turned off the space right now and they're leaving. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. So you want to know why I engage with these fuckwits in the first place is because well, I know why you do. I just don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I do enjoy myself when I'm doing it. But, um, but no, it's because I, it's the, it's the downstream effect. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I don't, I feel some this depends on who's saying it. Like if it's fucking Alex from date psych, I've given up on that dude. Like the dude is, it's what's interesting about Alex. It, and he was just in this documentary for with, um, 
with Lauren Southern, Lauren Southern's documentary of all people. You're going to put those two people together. I'm probably not going to take you seriously. Um, but the, uh, the, the whole point of it is, is, you know, he's tr they're, they're trying to find some way to disqualify the red pill. And the reason why they're doing that is because they don't want young men to start voting for, for Trump. Cause they think that it's some sort of, you know, uh, gateway the red pill is a gateway drug for you to go and, you know, pull the, pull the, your punch your card for Trump in on November 6th. And so when I see stuff like the, the, the multiple incel research thing and all, all that ever comes out of Alex's mouth is just like the red pill doesn't know what it's talking about. I'm like, dude, you don't even have a, like, I've got a degree in fucking psychology. You have no fucking degree in psychology, dude. You have, you're still a fucking student at this point. Mm -hmm. Like in his late forties, what is his credentials? Because I'm, I'm, I usually don't care about like people say, well, I'm, I'm a credentialed, you know, I've got a doctorate in, in, you know, psychotherapy and stuff. Like, oh, okay. I mean, I can understand that, but like, I don't see that as something as like, I want to know what your ideas are. Tell me what your ideas are. And then I'll judge you based on the quality of your ideas. But the yeah. thing is, it's like, if people come at me and they go, well, Rolo, you don't really have a doctorate in, in behavioral psychology. You've only got a bachelor's degree. And so, okay. Well, if you're going to come at me with academic, you know, academia, what the, was it? The uh, appeals to uh, authority. Authority. Yeah, file, logical fallacy. If you're going to appeal to authority, I'm going to appeal back to you. <laughs> like, well, and the whole thing is a lack of confidence, too, right? According to your, you know, your metrics, I'm more qualified to talk about this than you are. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing I like about it because you don't yeah, bring up your credentials. Which, well, that's what the you game say, you want to play. Yeah, you, what you say has to stand on its own merits. Right. That's it. When they're going to credentialism, that's just saying I don't have the confidence to stand up for what I'm saying. I need somebody to blame if it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is wrong. Well. That's what we were taught. So it's the policy was wrong. Yeah. That's like when cops shoot a dude and like, well, I followed policy. Well, that's great. Yeah, this is what this is what protocol told me to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I went to training. Yeah, don't blame me. Blame the university. It's like, no, no, no. You can't have it both ways. You can't be an authority and then offload authority. If you were that, you might as well be a therapist. Well, their their appeals to authority are interesting, too, because if that's if that's the if that's the basis for your disqualifying me, then I'm going to turn it back on you, too. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have a doctorate. In fact, Will Costello only got his doctorate because he did the fucking ins the, the half assed hairball incel research that he did. Right. And here I am trying to qualify this. And people say, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like. No, I do. I went, I had to run experiments. I did pretty much the same shit this guy had to do. I just didn't do it for a doctorate, you know, but it's, it's interesting to me to see that the, that that's the, the, the angle that they want to use to disqualify things. And it's like, Almost well, like they're just trying all these different ones and then hopefully well, something sticks. Well, so, and that's the whole thing. Are you bad? Can I just miss you? Okay, so whether it's Alex from Date Psych trying to disqualify things based on like, well, here's here's the statistics I came up with in my Twitter poll, um, and here's uh, and then you got Matt Walsh wanting to say, well, you know, maybe your marriage isn't going to be that bad if you do these things, right? They're all both of those. They're hitting it from different angles, but what mm -hmm. they're trying to do is they're trying to disqualify anything that the red pill has to say. Yeah. Why? Why now? Why in 2024? Why in Mar well, soon to be March of 2024? Why? Well, what other boogeyman can you make? The alt right has been mined to death. Yeah, they've already took out the Proud Boys. All that's left is these goofy red pill guys. Yeah, that's uh, that's why they want. That's why they want to turn incels into the new radical terrorists that yeah, are going. There's no on. more bad guys out there. They have to invent one, and we are the easiest ones. Had they actually paid attention, they'd know. Red Pill's not a Trump fan. First off, it's international. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. it's not political, and thirdly. The idea of a male demagogue to follow is antithetical to everything we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And then even yourself, they call me the godfather. Well, it's kind of a bit of a tongue in cheek thing. I just went with it because I thought it was funny. And everybody's like, he oh, thinks he's like the godfather. Pat Campbell he's like, no. telling me it. Yeah. I, was, I didn't give myself that name. That was Pat Campbell that gave me that name. I just yeah. went, with it. I just rolled with if it. If anything, when you say it's more mocking than anything. Yeah. And then like when. <laughs> This when, is uh, your God. You guys are pathetic. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. And I'm not going to, I don't know this for sure, but I'm just going to speculate here. But like when Kevin Samuel started calling himself the Godfather, that's when about the time I realized that he spent quite a bit of time in Tulsa, Oklahoma, before he went to Texas, before he went to Miami. I'm like, I wonder if he heard me and Pat Campbell on Pat Campbell's show in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when we were doing it in 2017, 2018. I don't know, but he did start calling himself the Godfather after a while, and people picked up on that, and they kept going with it. And I was like, I was happy he took it. Like, please, you'd be the Godfather. Well, Tate. he was the original Pearl and Tate, wasn't he? Just lifting your material wholesale yes. and then adding some preacher slang onto it. More or less, yeah. I mean, Three Secrets couldn't quite do it 
all he had was oh, gym gear was, and a, a protein shake. But whatever. Like no one in the chat goes 33. See, what the fuck is he talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, you guys in the chat, you don't realize this. You hear us shitting on, tur on Pearl and Tate, and you're like, this has never happened before. It's like, this is the third iteration of these bozos. Mm -hmm. The only difference is they keep getting uglier. I just don't know. <laughs> well, like so when i when i see shit like this it's like uh i wish you would do it with steve did okay well I, I will be happy to i put out the call and and i'm just going to reiterate here and i didn't even i didn't even know that this was going to happen this just worked out this way but we had myron and fresh out in vegas they happened to be out right before the super bowl uh we were lucky enough to get uh marquette from marquette from uh from Saint and Center, he showed up as well. That was awesome, man. We got we got Cappy. We got Aaron Clary was on that show. Myself and then Jake. Uh, I forget uh, Jake Shields. Jake Shields was uh, MMA fighter who has fought uh, John Fitch before, oh. um, and so and has all nothing but respect, nothing but good things to say about John. Um, but and then myself and then uh, Mike Sartain, and that was the show where we said, hey. Anybody who wants to come and, and sit across the table from us and tell us we're wrong, include, I mean, we were supposed to have Andrew Wilson there. Andrew was getting baptized that weekend. So getting dipped in water. So we let him, you know, been getting baptized. Hasn't he been baptized for a while now? I was, I was like, really? Like you haven't been baptized yet? Yeah. Does that mean you're going to never? He's going to stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like he's like like Ron White or something. Let me tell you why you're fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm just laughing at the baptism of the cigarettes just dripping yeah. out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know it's like it's like Dean Martin or fucking like Ron yeah. White delivery. Um, but no, uh, so I mean, we opened it up for everybody, and nobody fucking wants to show up. By the way, though, the only two people who had the sack to do it is uh, Farah and Jasmine Jafar. The, the, is those there real people? people? The two cam ha, the two cam hoes. Oh, who bit, who are basically both both destiny plants. But I'm like, okay, fine. You guys want to come and, uh, and do a debate with us? No problem. At least they had the balls such as it is, figuratively speaking, to come to Las Vegas and sit across the table from me and Mike. You know who won't? Chase. You know who from the whatever podcast. You know who won't? Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, all the rest of you fuckwits who, who are like cowards who want to talk about like their convictions in this and, oh, here's how we're going to save the West and, you know, oh, just you know, be nice to your wife and you have a better marriage. Okay, fine. Come to fucking Vegas, sit across the table from us and let's talk it. Let's talk it out on a live stream. Nope. And then I realized this, these guys never do live streams. Oh. There's a reason why it's all recorded because they know that people would be, they would have to actually like somebody would like throw well, out. Think on yeah. They would, they would have to, someone would throw out a $300 super chat and they would feel compelled to actually answer it. And it would be something like, how come you won't go a debate role to Mossy? <laughs> you know, the truck article. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They would have to read it. God, you know what I, I I don't know this, but you know what I, I have the video. I should go back and look this. I want to find out how much <laughs> how much the super chat was for that one tweet where where a Sydney Watson read it to, to five Jack bucks. It was like five dollars. Five, five bucks ruins his career. Yeah, it wasn't five dollars super it was chat. That's the one that got yeah the five dollar for that one, and then like right after that was the Tate's five dollar. My wife is a four, and I play ticket for pennies. If oh that's why, because there's a super chat you had that was five dollar one cents in here. It's like there, no heartfelt for you. That's been my running gag for like the last two years. That's that all. It, no super right. chats and five dollar increments. It has to be a doll, a penny more or a penny less. Uh, oh, I also want to say that Steve Dace has a producer named Aaron who is also a devoted Christian. Okay, uh, watches red pill content. He mentions Pearl, whatever podcast, and Andrew Tate all the time. Well, good for them. See, you know why I don't. Uh, like so he's not really into red pill content. Yeah. Do you know why I don't like these debates? Like, you know, like you've seen me mention the Whisper article. They're not really debates. You're not changing hearts and minds. It's just brand. Mm -hmm. But when people ask like this, I can't help but the feeling of, you know, when you're eight, I don't know, uh, you're eight years old and you take your action like He-Man and G.I. Joe and you just clash them together, make an explosion. Mm -hmm. It's this is what I remember. Like Superman's an eight year old playing with two different brands of action figure. Superman stronger than Tarzan. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you didn't have any toys that day. So you borrowed your sister's Barbie and she starts fighting G.I. Joe and like. It's like they just want you to dance. Dance for quarters. Talk to my brand. You should have a Lord a saber battle with Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I know. God, I know. <laughs> I know you too. I really do because like I have to, I hate to have to take shit like this seriously, you know? Because uh, as I said before, I'm only taking this seriously because I don't want people who are like like guys coming into the sphere right now who are actually looking for like answers 
to have to deal with can Superman beat up fucking Tarzan, right? And to me, like I, I have people hit me up all the time on my Twitter and my well, my the Twitter DMs and my Instagram now that I got my Instagram back. Congrats. Um, yeah, thanks. It only cost me twenty three hundred dollars. Um, but uh, the uh, the the guys who will say, Rolla, why do you even engage with these fuckwits? Because it's just it's just fantasy land. It's you're 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 engaging with these guys, and the basis of their argument is pretty much a a, a fictional story. It's a it's like Lord of the Rings, right? It's yeah. It's a Marvel superheroes, you know, my, my matchup team matchup or something like that. And I'm just like, well, I understand that. And I did actually write a book on religion. And yeah, you're right. Should I be engaging with these guys? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to, but I have to. <laughs> it's not just that. It's such yeah. a lot of the times they don't even believe the shit. Like I watch it. It's on Twitter all the time. Somebody will throw this shit out. And then you'll throw a little shit back and they're like, well, let's talk about it on a podcast together. And they're like, why don't you just call this producer? Why do you have to do this whole bread and circus monkey dance just to get on a show with somebody? Yeah. You know what I mean? Drives me nuts. Well, I, I, it's just I, like, can you at least be mad like a normal? Like, can you really be mad? Can you inauthentically be mad to get on a producer credit? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, I so I have had three people hit me up recently to do feature interviews okay one was rebel entertainment and let me tell i could tell you stories about that they, they were actually a really professional video movie making team like are I they the same one as like rebel news i don't know if they're rebel news but are they out of canada you meant i don't know i don't no no they're not they're out of los angeles i know that, that. it's, it's ah, called okay. Rebel entertainment I did a, um, like Mike did a, uh, an interview with them. I turned them down initially. Mike did it and he said, you should really talk to these guys. They're like legit. So I did. And so I did a, I did a feature interview out at Gene Roach dry Lake bed out, which is about like 15, 20 minutes South of, of, uh, Vegas. It's where they go and shoot all the car commercials. You know, when they have show them out all the big sand flats. Salt flats and shit like that. Yeah. The problem is, is that the night before it rained all fucking night. So the dry Lake bed is the muddy as shits, messy, smelly shit water lake bed now and i'm out it there looks and it's like you like, were at burning man <laughs> oh it did oh i showed you the pictures yeah and it was um hey <laughs> burning soaking man that's what it was <laughs> um but uh no i'm out there and it's 37 degrees out there and i i did not wear anything that was warm enough for to really be out there because i didn't know how long we were going to be doing it because i didn't even think we would do it right. i take the camaro out there because they want me to take the camaro out there and i'm i know i know you know me um <laughs> And so I'm out there and I'm freezing my dick off. They want me to sit in front of the car, like, um, you know, just sort of like chilling and everything. Like I was chilling. All right. It was 37 degrees. And I'm like, okay, let me tell you about hypergamy, you know, and then I had to get back in the car and then heat up and then come out and do another take or whatever. It was just, it was just a fucking Jeez. bad scene. But I did that and it was worthwhile. I think Miguel from uh, dollar cost crypto did it. Uh, Aaron Clary did it. They came to, uh, they came to sticky paws uh, uh, studios and they interviewed us and they did some, you know, they got all kinds of B roll and everything really. I can't wait to see what they do quite honestly. But at the same time, I have vice hitting me up and they're still hitting me. <laughs> Kendrick keeps hitting me up. And I'm like, dude, there is no fucking way I'm going to do a vice. vice. Interview, did they ever release that Tate one? Uh, yeah, they did, oh. but that's not why I turned them down. I turned them down because just prior to them wanting to talk to me or doing an interview with me, they released this thing on Vice about how they were responsible for taking down Justin Waller's four channels on his YouTube. And I'm like, and like they intentionally did that. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking talk to you guys. Get the fuck out of here. I'm, well, you know, I'm not going to sign up for my own fucking death. See, that's center. why I don't like you talking to, the, to any of these people. That's why I refuse to. They always ask you for things, but they never offer anything yeah yeah well that out with collabs you ever right. like you do these collabs with brands that have nothing to do with you i've always checked it never grows subscribership it never grows mm -hmm. sales so it's like I, what are they offering me and if they're not even going to be interesting mm -hmm. or have a genuine conversation they're just going to start doing talking points in that and like why i have to get myself back into the selfish that, prick Be yeah one. exactly so this i got to get into selfish prick mode because i need to get into fuck you pay me mode because yeah. I, you, you know what woke me up to that? I was trying to get, and, and this is nothing against Gadsod. I love him to death. But like I was trying to get Gadsod on to uh, Access Vegas. And he happened to be going to Scottsdale, Arizona to do some kind of thing. And he, that was close enough to Vegas that he would come up, right? 
I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, but I'm going to have to give you like my policies and my, my speaking fee and everything else. I'm like, Oh, okay. Let's find out how much you want. Dude. What? Like his basic speaking fee is $25,000 for a speaking Jesus. And I'm like, damn, I was pretty like, get that money. What the fuck am I doing? (laughs) And so, but I mean, and he probably worth it, but not only that, that's the speaking fee. You got to fly his happy ass out to you and you got to put him up at a, like a five-star hotel on top of everything else. I thought about this and I go, you know what? That probably is, he probably will do that. That's probably why he doesn't do too many like interviews. Cause I've seen him with, with uh, Jordan Peterson, but those are usually not live one-on-ones. They're like, he, you know, like what we're doing right now on stream yeah, yeah. or he'll be on Joe Rogan. He'll do Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is like, Joe Joe is Joe. Rogan. yeah. So he'll go probably Joe Rogan is probably not paying him 25 grand to show up. Right. Uh, but I, th- I thought about that and I go, and I, I, I understand. I'm like, yeah, you're probably worth, it's probably worth your while. I would do it if I was Gadsod. I'd probably charge 25 grand for a speaker's fee as well. But like, especially when like, I think for the, for the most part, he, what is he like a teacher at the University of Ontario or Toronto or something? Yeah, U of T. I think it is. It's mm-hmm. one of them anyway. I know he's Canadian. So, uh, but well, apparently I, he's an IDF agent. <laughs> That's oh, the yeah. Word. No, he's Massad now. Yeah, Massad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's Massad. <laughs> Sure he is. <laughs> I don't even know if it's about the money though, because I was thinking. Remember when Rich used to talk about his collabs? He was charging like twelve hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and people and lose I, their minds, man. Yeah, but I I realized there was a point to it when I first started doing the collabs and that way back in the day it was like fifty bucks a pop for an hour and the quality you get and mm-hmm. the the miserable feeling you get afterwards. It's almost like you just have to price it high enough to weed out the people that make yeah. you hate life. Oh yeah, I, I um, bet you it's. I bet you somebody charged him. They gave him nineteen thousand dollars. And he hated the guy so much. He's like 20, 20 or out. <laughs> well, Rolo, what do I have to do to get men- mentored by you? Um, well, what do you mean by mentor? You want to come live with me <laughs> or you want me to like, like talk to you? Um, I do one-on-one like consults. I don't, I don't even, I, I oh, you still do those. Oh yeah. I, I still do them. Um, I don't do them as often as I probably would like to. Um, I probably will. Now that I'm moving to Vegas, I'll probably do them more. Uh, I, what I do, here's my process. And since we're on this topic right now, what I do is if you want to, if you want to do a one-on-one counseling with me, I do analysis. I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to I'm not going to hold your hand and like, say, come on, bro, you can do it. I'm just going to tell you what you're, what I see going on. And you, it's really up to the student to really, I mean, I can only be so effective as a teacher. You have to actually, you know, take this stuff and put it into practice, but I will give you analysis and I will give you a consult for sure. But my hourly is anywhere between a uh, thousand and eight hundred dollars an hour. Right. Yeah. And people go, Oh my God, how could he possibly charge that? I'm like, how could I possibly not charge that? That's fucking cheap. You know how much you'd be spending with rich or or fucking Gadsod for that. Well, it's not just that. How many people want that from you? For an hour, man. How many like, people I'm want to have an hour of your time? Yeah, I'm a fucking bargain. So what I will do is what if you want to do one-on-one counseling with me, send me an email, rtrationalmail at gmail.com, and then put counseling in the title in the title in the subject line. And then I will say I will respond with my uh, policies just so you know that we're all on the same page. And then that has my fees and that's it. That's how it works. And if that's too much money for you, guess what? You can also join my Patreon, which is only two hundred dollars for a two hour thing once a month. You're there with I I cap it at twenty five guys and you could do that. And it's much more affordable if you'd like to do that. It's just more in a group setting. So you have all the both those options if you want to do that. But. I'm, I'm always hesitant to say, oh, I charge $1,000 an hour, or $800 an hour, whatever it is. It just kind of depends on what the guy's situation is. Honestly, your group one is probably better. That's it why is. I switched over with my Patreon. Right. Yeah. Because like how many out of, <laughs> yeah, out of every hundred guys that you would consult, how many would actually do anything? Probably 20% at most, maybe right. less. I find that that group, it's better because then you can charge less for all those people who are very price conscious. Yeah. And then the ones who don't do shit, but they want to be part of the club are basically subsidizing the guys that do work. Yeah, so that way, you... it, and it makes it easier on your psycho or what your psyche, because now you're like, okay, he's useless, but at least he's helping this guy out. You know, everybody yeah. kind of has a use then. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing is that like, I, I also work with men of action. So I go into, I, I occasionally like at least once a month, maybe twice a month, I go into the Zoom call for Men of Action. That's a three-hour long thing. And it's guys who have got, I mean, fuck, my, Mike's got like 150, 200 people in that. Uh, that's too much for me. But like he he can manage it. He, he He's the ringmaster. 
he seems to be able to manage that pretty well. And I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, I'll go in there and I help. So if you guys also want to join uh, men of action, that's fine, but you're going to be paying a lot more than $200 a month on that too. So before you guys criticize me for charging a thousand dollars an hour or whatever, like go look at the going rate for a lot of these other guys. I'm a fucking park. And I tell you, yeah, but I mean, you guys don't really need it. All the stuff that we've had is there even well, before the books. Yeah. You could have gone to the married red pill. You could have gone to so suave. You can go to the rational mail. 99% of what you need is there. The only thing you're missing is action. Right. Right. And that's, and, and that's then, really yeah. what men of action is. And the other thing about men of action is like, you get more than just a zoom call, right? You, if you want to go, if you want to come to the green room at uh, access Vegas, you, you're more than invited. Uh, if you want to go out and do these, uh, these special events in Vegas with me and Mike and everything, if you're part of that group, yeah, you're, you're in. Oh, that's um, cool. and then, uh, and, and that's, those are just those, I mean, there's other intensive and seminars and other things and, and they have different tiers. I'm just going from the basic tier. They have other, other tiers of membership there too. They, I mean, hell they have, um, you can go spend like a, a week with Mike if you want to, like they have, he's got a test probably pretty fucking expensive, but, um, you can do that as well. So there's different tiers. I only offer like two tiers. One's like my $200 Patreon. And then if you want a one-on-one, it's a thousand dollars an hour. That's it. Yeah. Well, it's the thing too, though. It's like you're promising what you're delivering. You're not promising the moon. I'll get you laid from all the girls. Mm -hmm. Yours is more here. I'll look at your situation. I'll analyze it as best I can. And I know I've seen your sheet. Yeah, it's a lot of like. If I think this is outside of my wheelhouse, I'm going to tell you and refund your money. That's my yeah. That's always my caveat. It's like if I think you have some clinical issue that I am not qualified to address, I will I will refer you to a professional. That's the Mm -hmm. first thing I say say in that thing. That always scares me. A lot of guys don't fire their clients because they're afraid to turn down the money. But you know what, Ryan? None of us should actually be talking about any of this because we don't know what we're talking about. Problems, I think, yeah. exist with online relationship advice today. And this can be boiled. Welcome to Chin Bun 101. I hate you. Done, maybe simply is you I have a lot of people so that just much. make things up because it feels right to them. Stop dating only one girl at a time. We don't like to have fun and hang out with girls. We like to sleep with girls. They don't really look at... I love how they use those two. Like, who the who even is that? Do you know any who either of these people are? I have no idea who any of this is. Who is this guy? I don't know. This guy's supposed to be Red Pill. I have no idea who either one of these these individuals are. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. But you know, they're not referring to them. They're referring to us. Look at uh, what we know empirically about what makes relationships function well what makes them function poorly, and you have a lot of ideology that filters into this. Men care about looks and personality, and women care less about looks and more about, I don't know how to draw the universe, so I drew a galaxy. <laughs> Folks, I- Okay, do you know that is? That's home math. You've seen home math stuff before. Right? I have not. I tried to watch one, and it's, it's, oh. it, I get it. I know a lot of people like it. It's not for me. It's, it's Saturday morning cartoons for the red pill. I yeah. like it. I do like, I do like home math. I think it's great. I think for people who have that, like they just want to have something that's humorous and that's like easy to digest. I think it's perfect. Yeah. But if you want to get into, you know, you want to get deeper into it. Like it's essentially like the cartoon version of the rational mail. Psychology or pop psychology, things people popularly believe that sometimes are right, but very often are wrong as well. You have a lot of trends that are kind of ideological that filter into what I like to call like TikTok therapy. Right. Kind of beliefs that people have about how human psychology should be. I want to know, like, why anyone should take this dude seriously. Like what? What could like, he wants to talk about credentials and all this other shit? Like, why would anyone take this dude seriously? Or even how they think a therapist should act in this context, but really is very often divorced from the way that uh, actual trained psychologists perceive it, specifically what trained psychologists such as yourself you notice that though he's very careful with the language so he never quite admits to being a therapist he just makes you infer it he draws the connection right right yeah you're right everything dances around the issue right everything's well you know this sometimes it's right sometimes it's wrong do you remember i've been using that i I hope you remember this i'll come back i always remember this i hope you remember this do you remember like back in like like the early 2000s maybe it's sort of like the mid 2010s where Fox News was a real big deal, right? Like uh, Bill O'Reilly and uh, Hannity and Combs when yeah. Combs was still alive. Chris O'Neill used to be on there as his right. one of my friend. Yeah, yeah. Or um, uh, I'm trying to think who else, like Sean Hannity, uh, Gretchen Carlson, like all these things. And one of the things that they did, one of their sort of rhetoric tools was they used the term some say. 
right? So they'd have somebody on the show that they were inter- that they're ideologically opposed to, and they would say, "Well, some say that people with your belief set like to kill babies, to fricassee them in a in a frying pan, and eat them." What would you have to say about that? Because some say that. Some yeah. say this. Some say that you kill puppy dogs and and you know eat their brains out. But some say that. What do you what do you think? You know, like what are you even supposed to say to that? Like who? Yeah, that's why I like that Polyev yeah. clip. The one here where he was eating the apple. You've seen that one, haven't you? Who says this? What did they say? Yeah. Where did they say it? And, and the guys like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I you want to know. Like people say, how come they how come they don't want to debate Rolo? How come they don't want to sit across the table from him? How, how come they don't have the sack to fucking back up their convictions? Because they're too busy with some say. Because that's basically what all their entire grift is based on. Like even like uh, when rhetorical uh, tricks. Yeah, exactly. Well, when when uh, Matt Walsh says something like, uh, oh, well, you know, those numbers are actually bullshit. But let's just say that they're real. That's yeah. some say that's that's a some say uh, statement or terminology. Right. And that's all fucking uh, Alex does is the some say uh, within Manosphere red pill subcultures is kind of this appropriation of evolutionary psychology as well, almost turning it into like a character. And so people take what are essentially average differences or trends between groups and they apply it to everyone. Wait, For a, minute, example- wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, I thought he was trying to make that him. I was like looking to see if there's like a beard. <laughs> it becomes enlightened and the grows so average as differences or trends between groups and they apply it to everyone. For example, the idea in the manosphere of, of uh, all women are like that, right? They call it AWALT. Every single woman, for example, is capable hey. of cucking a man, cheating, or lying, or being deceptive. Uh, do I believe that? <laughs> 33 Secrets guy, case in point. Finally, not somebody I know. Example. Not a good example, bro. Not all women are like that? No, I don't. And, you know, this is something that is. Now, Paul, Paul's Paul. 33 yeah. Secrets guy. Just what the fuck, man? Like who even like has anybody even heard from this dude in like the last like three years, four years? Is he still even like doing his thing? I wish I knew. I he don't probably know. did like mystery, knocked up a girl, and now he's out there playing mystery. Exactly. Mom. Yeah, now he's working at Walmart as a Walmart greeter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I so the thing that gets me is like again, this is the some say, right? Some say not all women are like that, right? Well, like here's the thing is like there's it's always ambiguous it's always like this open-ended thing well except for that that he was taking hyper literally yes well there's one woman who's not like this it's like well that's not the point but you would but you don't know that because you don't care well so like i got this when i did like what two years three almost three years ago now uh when i did the interview with uh michaela peterson and I do this thing. And I'm very, I was with her for like two fucking hours. Right. And I'm very specific about what I'm talking about. And then the clips that come out is like, well, Rollo thinks that all women are like this. What the fuck do I have to do? And they know that short form TikTok. You want to talk about TikTok therapy. Yeah. TikTok in the sense that anybody can misrepresent anything you want. They want you want to think of you for yep. in a 45 second TikTok video basically the opposite of what you would learn studying evolutionary psychology or or personality psychology where there are individual differences and you know not all men are the same not all women are the same you can use sociosexuality as an example that uh you know some people so are very high in this very promiscuous people, many people are not at the same time some say some some this some that right how that all ends up though it's the you it's just the, have to muddy the waters. This is the same just, way they used to argue against uh, mm-hmm. the war in Iraq and anything like this back in the day. It was just, well, technically, this thing has an exception. As long as you can find one exception for anything, you do it enough and everybody's confused. So now you kind of got them primed. Well, now you don't know what to believe. Well, let me talk to you. I have the goatee right. of power. Goatee of power. I have, and they're, you know, in they're money. all dating sites, man. In the, who's the, the pussy pocket guy? Again? Oh, Brian from uh, with an X. <laughs> Brian, hey, Brian. I got a specialized app for dating now that's based on Christian fundamentals. Date Psych's like, hey, I got a great dating app too based on scientific they fundamentals. They all do. They They're all just do. separating Coke from Pepsi now. Yeah. Everybody's like promising to get you late. It's no different than mystery selling the Venusian arts. Venusian, yeah, exactly. And at least I don't have an app. Bro Tomasi does not have an app. I have books. You can read my books. You want me to counsel you? Sure, no problem. There's no app. There's no sign up now. There's no pre, pre-list. pre you know, There's no funnel marketing here. I don't Bro do anything. The Ibanez method gets you the third hottest girl at the party. <laughs> I will I will sell a funnel marketing program on playing guitar before I do it on the red bill. Yeah. 
how do they get there? Because of that beanie guy is an asshole. Therefore, yep. I'll get you laid. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah. I, oh man, I I'm, I'm I'm I shudder to actually put this on here, but I'll I'll I might get this later. I've got Owen Cook and uh, Mystery. They just did Dude. a, a catch up thing together. I was like, when this is like watching when remember when Van Halen got back together for a bit and then kicked Buddy out and kicked like, Roth again. I know it's like David Lee Roth and Eddie got back together again. Yeah. <laughs> Halen starts talking about his surgery and Ross like, that's not important. I'm back in the band. And then Halen's like, not anymore. You son of a bitch. You know, I, I, I could put this, I don't think I would get a copyright strike. Um, but no, I watched, it's not even that long. I, sh- I, I sent this to Mike and Mike's like, Mike has been trying to get a uh, mystery on access Vegas. I, if we can get Toronto, him, apparently. Yeah. We've been trying to get him to come out. Uh, Owen can't go back to Canada because if he does, then he can never get back into the United States again. So, Whoa, what is uh, this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what, but the last time I saw Owen was, uh, gosh, over a year ago at uh, Fresh and Fit. He just unannounced, just showed up, and, and he came on for about like half an hour when I was on there. I understand now. I understand everything I needed to know about Owen right after that episode. It's just like, you want to talk about somebody who is definitely on the spectrum. He'll see, no, he says, he, he'll, he'll openly tell you he's on the spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, oof. Yeah, I figured that when I'd watch his one and a half hour just stream of consciousness walking through the Nevada desert live streams he was doing. Well, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. It was funny because he, I'm ready for death. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready for death. <laughs> hey, I was going to make an ad out of that. I totally forgot. Thank you uh, for reminding me. I have a meme, have a meme of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was during 20. That was during the 2020 election cycle, too, because everybody, oh, we're all, it's, 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 it's the, the, what, the rapture's coming. <laughs> the Lord's going to take us away. I'm waiting for that narrative. Trust me. By the time we get to August, the, the rapture will have happened again oh. <laughs> four years later. <laughs> I don't even care. I, I only reason I want Biden to win is because at least then these guys won't be emboldened to start fighting Trump for four years, you know, just yeah. to fuck over their business a little bit, just a little bit. I, uh, I, so anyways, with, with date site, with, with Alex, it's, it's funny to me, like he take he's, he's what, um, Nick Krauser would call a secret King. He's like the guy that's sitting over at the, at the side of the party, you know, he's like, mm-hmm. well, these guys, if all these people here just knew how great I, I statistics. was, they would be over <laughs> here talking to me yet yeah, statistics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely, he definitely meets all the criteria for a secret King. And, well, that's, I mean, you know for a fact the reason he's doing this is because he's trying to fuck somebody at least oh, like yeah. as many chicks as he can. yeah anyway I, i'm assuming girls i could be uh, wrong you know because there's that rumor you know i'm glad he was you that brought this up and not me okay so i'm gonna blame <laughs> this on you because <laughs> that uh, sounds about right i'll say that like as much as i give shit to um uh chris williamson like Mike and I have been talking about trying to get Chris Williamson on. I'm like, dude, you will never. And I, you, they say never. I'm saying never. You will never get Chris Williamson to ever have me on his show, and he will never come on. It would be. I told him, you're you're fighting an uphill battle, Mike, because if Chris Williamson knows that you're associated with me, there's no way he's going to uh, he's going to go on with you. Um, because he's 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 worse than uh, Hafiz was. Like he just he he won't even say my name and. I um, won't even call it righteous anger. No, that doesn't even come. No, That's that an inside even, joke for all the rest of you. <laughs> it doesn't even, that doesn't even register. I don't even register on his radar, but I will say this is like when I'm watching stuff, cause people, I don't even, I don't even follow him anymore. I just gave up on, on him. But like, of course, everybody wants to like start shit with me. Right. Mm-hmm. So I got all these people who follow me and I got people who like say, Oh, did you see what Pearl said about you? Did you see what Chris Williamson said about you? Did you see what, I don't know, jerk off said about you. And I'm like, no, but I'm sure you're going to show me right now because you screen capped it because I can't see him. They block me or I block them. And so I get all this shit from uh, from Chris Williamson and and I I, I I try not to respond to his shit, but um, I've never seen Chris Williamson. You don't try very hard. Let's face it. No, I don't, but I'm going to give him <laughs> shit right now. Uh, Chris, I have never seen Chris Williamson with a chick. I have never on any of his social media, I've never seen him with a female uh, good looking, bad looking, unless he's interviewing. I'm like Sadia Khan or whoever the fuck, you know, whatever, you know, fly by night is coming around now. But I, you know, other than him interviewing someone like Mary Louise Perry or Louise Perry, whatever the fuck her name was like, okay, but that's an interview. Okay. Like Michaela Peterson, that's an interview. I've never seen him 
with a female. I've Does he never. post a lot of like, look at me Instagram shit or? And I have seen him with other dudes in steam rooms in Las Vegas because there's dudes he hangs out with and they do that. And I've lived on this planet 55 years and never done videos or had been in a steam room, you know, in my fucking tidy whities like that. So in fairness, he might have a gambling addiction and these might be his enablers. That might be. He might have lost his clothes and they ended up in the spa. It's, an odd thing. it's like it's 1986. Why would you even? I mean, whatever. I yeah. Mean, rare. Do what he wants. Well, to I, don't care. I mean, if you're gay, you're gay. Well, whatever. But like, don't sell yourself as being like the hero of the fucking, you know, the anti manosphere. And there's no, there's like people. The reason why I even say this is because you and I ate so much shit for the last like four or five years from Andrew Tate throwing crap at me and you. And I'm going to say this right now because I don't even give a shit at this point. <laughs> you know, so much shit for, oh, those guys are married. They don't have any receipts. Where's the receipts? Where's the girl? I'm, I'm showing you receipts of me at, at, at Wet Republic with like my, you know, Allegra and, and all the rest of these. I can show you. I'm doing Access Vegas. I'm showing you more receipts than Andrew Tate has ever showed you or Chris Williamson has ever showed you. Or that's Andrew true. Tate showed off his kids once when he was in trouble with the law. Yeah. I'm a father, you can't arrest me. Like, uh huh. <laughs> or, or you got oh, uh, Pat Stedman. Remember that? Oh, they don't show any receipts. Pat Stedman is sitting in a federal penitentiary right now and I'm on Access Vegas. Six Where's years. No chance for parole. Just saying. Good God. And we and were low you, IQ. Three years. How shitty an IQ we were. At least we smart. didn't fall for you, that. You didn't even talk about the. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, he's we're awesome. smart enough not to get caught in the Pentagon or whatever the hell he was doing. And I'll tell you the thing that gets me the most. And 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 I'm glad I have you on here to, to say this because Dude, they, they, they were, this is so they ran you, you're running me up the flagpole. They ran you up the flagpole and you deserve <laughs> some fucking props right now. right? <laughs> oh, dude, I got so many good ad ads out of it. We're square, man. <sighs> God, man. They, <laughs> I mean, Ru I mean, just fucking ruthless. Like talking yeah. about your 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 well, your wife, I guess, your common law wife. And El Rolo has been in the game. I still get this shit from Jules from fucking uh, Sartorial Shooter. I'm like, dude, that's like so 2019. Where the fuck yeah. have you been for the last five years? Right. And and it's like, where's the receipts? I'm like, the receipts are I'm doing this in Vegas and you're sitting around talking to some imam about whether or not it's OK to have a dog spit on you or not, you know, and still be a good Muslim. I don't what the fuck is this you know me though? It's not even the shit talking or the hate. It's like whatever wrestling promos. I get it. It's that they want to compete with you or me or anybody. But like with what? You got five books. I got three. I had to think. I actually have to think about how many I have now. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, so this is what I got competition. Well, I'm going to get one ahead of you. <laughs> but yeah, but that's what I mean. None of them have anything else. It's like, well, what are you competing against? His five books versus what? You have a... You have nothing. I think Stedman had a master class about something and he had a suit buttoned up wrong. So it's really... It's not leading it off with a good foot, you know? Yeah, or or you've got like idiots like, like you know, uh, Alex from Date Sykes. Like, what do you... What do At you least do? he's got an app now. <laughs> At least that's something. <laughs> Does he have an app? I thought it was because I think he just has or, a dating program, like an online dating program. Like here's. Oh, I thought he meant like an actual like a program for your phone. He means like. No, a, he has a dating uh, app that was well, I was app. It's a it's a it's a service, I guess, because and I'll tell you what's ironic is it's the same concept that Dr. David Buss tried to launch in 2020. Oh, yeah. So people gave me. That. You want to know why they give me so much shit? Because I'm the only person that I know who called out Dr. Da and I like David Buss, but I am I called out Jeff. Miller too. Work, so, you know, I, and he hates my guts now. too. Dude, I, why? I don't know. But I miss when you and Jeff used to go at it. Those were the beefs I miss, man. Those were the good ones. They were fun. Like, it was laugh on all sides. Like, Nothing yeah. was solved. Everybody was happy. Yeah. You know, the only reason I knew Jeff Miller is because Diana Fleischman liked me. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I love I love Diana. It's Jeff. Whoa, 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 whoa! I have, I have like questions. Me. Not like me, like me, like that. Been, okay. I I knew her and I had like discourse with her because she was a, she's a behavioral side. She her her yeah. expertise is behaviorism. That's mine, right? So we had something common to talk about. And this was before like Evo Psych was like like the be all end all for for the red pill, right? Right. And so I always I always applied behavioral psychology to to red pill stuff. Right. And then Evo psych sort of like came into its own. And then I became more of an aficionado of, of Evo psych, but my background is actually in behaviorism. And so it was hers, but Jeff Miller's is it. And he was a, a student of David Buss. The only problem I had with Jeff Miller was his, his take on Polly. Everything else is. is oh, I, I know. 
<laughs> I was there for all of it. And that was enough to break the camel's back. That was a straw that broke the camel's back because he's very invested. Like he will like alter his like understanding of the universe in order to be able to fuck as many women as he can. And I get it. I would well, do yeah, it. What do they call that? The Steven, the Steven Pinker rule, how to ignore your lifetime body of work for a personal choice. Right. And that's the only, the only problem I had with, with, with Jeff Miller was like, like, I get it. If you want to say Polly is great, then f- that's fine. But like, you are also, you also wrote the book on mate guarding and jealousy, motherfucker. Like, I love where, <laughs> like, can we at least like give a pat tip and a nod to that? And he could, like, you've showed that don't pull a Jack Murphy and be all weird on this stuff. You're like, I don't think marriage is a good idea for men and I'm married. You're mm-hmm. allowed to have that contradiction. Is it suboptimal? Yes. Am I happy? Sure. Mm-hmm. Am I waving a cigar oh. around talking with, uh, uh, Ben Shapiro about it? No. No, no, no. Yeah. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> just holding it as a prop to this is burning my fingers. Can somebody please put this out? We need the smoke for effect. Just go yeah. with it. You know, it's funny is like later on. And I, I should probably show the rest of that video. Um, oh. I don't want to I don't want to brutalize you that. that <laughs> much, so. uh, no, because in that video, they're talking about all these red pill are these dude bro uh you know shows like what like whatever they can't stop talking about oh yeah dude they make whatever is like the perfect picture of fucking whatever now it's candace, the rick flair of podcasts candace owens has been on on whatever podcast michael knowles has been on whatever podcast um trying to think uh i don't think no, uh, Ben Shapiro has not been on, but I know he th- talks about Pearl and everything else. But those two have already been on there, and they want to talk shit about those those kinds of podcasts. Like you've been on those fucking podcasts. Well, what yeah, Ric Flair is going down at WrestleMania. I don't care if we fought at SummerSlam. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It, and it's it's actually, Ben Shapiro should go on there. He could borrow Destiny's chair. They got the one that you push the button and it goes up, so oh. they could be the same height as the girls. It'd be perfect. Well, like, so what gets me is they're sitting around smoking cigars, trying to like, hey, this is what real men do, you know? Yeah. But then those real men are talking shit about other real men. Oh, yeah, these yeah. guys all try to posture like they're real men. Not like us. We love our wives. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'll admit we're doing that too, but we're not better than that. And we're not claiming oh, to be. <laughs> God, I know. Well, the thing is, is like, it, and what gets me is it's, it's just intro. It's just dick waving. That's all yeah. it is. It's just yeah. sort of fighting you know and again steven crowder was waving his dick too right up until the time somebody had to pick up the dog shit and he decided nope this is my line in the sand and his wife was like all right then i know (laughs) again again you want to know why they don't do live streams because somebody in the live stream will give them a 500 dollars super chat and say fuck you look at what happened to steven crowder and they would have to address that and they would not want to address especially not candace owens who was instrumental in all that bullshit so, but you know, I want to ask you, this oh. is a question I've wanted to ask in a while, because um, oh. you're the one that made me aware of the term kayfabe. Yeah. Like, I've always known, I've known what it was, but I didn't know that there was actually a proper a term for it. Yeah. Do you know where the, where, where did it come from? Where, how did we get kayfabe? I want to say it came from uh, vaudeville and the theater in that, but I know it's got an older entomology than that. I just haven't looked further back than the vaudeville days. Because I was wondering, like, where what the like the the etymology of that word was, um, but now I was going to ask you is like, because when I thought about like kayfabe, it's so applicable to so many other things. It's not yeah. just, um, well, it's doctors, it's psychologists, it's a lot of the people we don't like here, yeah. therapists. Do you notice this? Like, I've talked to a bunch of uh, academics about uh, who's the guy Will whatever you were shitting on him earlier for his PhD being shit. Oh, um, Alex. Oh, no, no. Will Costello. Yeah. Will, Will Costello. Costello. So I was asking around. I'm like, because there was those accusations about his. Uh, was he getting government grants or not? Like, yeah, I've never seen this term in a research paper. Are. So, yeah. yeah. And I know a bunch of PhDs on Twitter and that. So I'm asking him, like, what is this stuff? And automatically they started closing ranks. So I'm like, oh, OK, I kind of get it. They're the idea of the academic being the smarter than you, the better than you. The kayfabe is a big part of it. Right. Yeah. Never fucking sell out the, the yeah. brotherhood. Never sell exactly. out. Exactly. Uh, a doctor the, can cut off yeah. the wrong arm and the other doctors will close ranks, not telling right. you that the biggest threat to your life right now in the hospital is malpractice. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, I, they, don't quote me on that. I know it's up there. It may not be number one, but yeah, malpractice. Yeah. Well, the, and again, like when I see the, sh- the I, and I realize it's a promo for the, for the stupid video that of all people, fucking Lauren Southern doing this, Lauren Southern, the queen of kayfabe. 
like wearing her fucking wedding ring for like months. I mean, like eight months after she's been divorced so she can like keep up appearances. And the only reason she did her come to Jesus, literally come to Jesus, uh, you know, video out in the know, backwoods of like British Columbia was because yeah. I called her out on the bullshit because her husband had told me, what the fuck is she still wearing my ring for? We've been divorced for eight months now. I say that and everybody loses their fucking minds. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but th again, that's kayfabe. That's like keeping up the appearance, like keeping up the like this is the character that I'm going to be. And you on need to take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, it, well, yeah and everybody wants to, everybody wants to uh, they, we all know that professional wrestling is fake, but yeah. we'd like to we want to go with the story and we want to believe in it because it's more enjoyable to play the it's like going to the Renaissance fair. Well, that's just it. They're that's for entertaining. Playing a character there. They're not like they break people never break character. Right. That's really what they're doing. Just like live. They're LARPing, you know, yeah, and that's what drives me nuts because wrestling it's it's an open like you need to believe in the thing, but we all kind of know. So it's an open secret. With all these people, they're they're not there. They're pretending yeah. it's real. Like, what's this dude? ADJ really thinks he's the president of the Manosphere. Anthony, yeah. So it's almost like uh, what did that Carl used to call the term? Uh, buying into your own mark, like where Ultimate right. Warrior changed his name to Warrior. That's like mm -hmm. this worst kind of kayfabe we have. Yeah, the doctors just closing ranks, making you think they're the healers of the sick, and they'll tell you how to survive COVID. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you're just a GP who hands out prescriptions. Like nobody cares. Yeah, they pretend I, to. I was watching um. Uh, what was it that that uh, it's an Apple series called For All Mankind? Ooh, and, yeah, good? it was okay. And there's it's a lot of girl power in it. It's like typical, oh. like you would expect. It's a semi decent story, but anyways, it's a it's an alternate like reality. Like uh, uh, JFK gets, I think JFK dies, but like Ted Kennedy doesn't die, and so like they they kind of like change up like the world history as they go along. Like things are way more advanced, and they're on the moon, and then they're on Mars, and everything else but one of the things that was part of it part of the space program one of the one of the girls who was a former astronaut um she ends up becoming the president but before she does she's like running for president right and they throw in lee atwater <laughs> and i don't know if you know who lee atwater is the name sounds familiar the, the, I, li I think it's in the, the most recent season like in the, in the fourth season the guy who is the the director of nasa is basically lee iacocca <laughs> oh, okay that's funny <laughs> you only get it if you're like gen x and so when they when they throw that that character out i go because it has like this Chrysler thing in the because Leia Iacocca was with Chrysler, right? Yeah, yeah. And you see it in the background. He's like, Yeah, when I was at Chrysler, blah, blah. I'm like, that's who they're that's who this motherfucker is. They throw in Lee Atwater. And I remember Lee Atwater because it, he was the campaign director for Ronald Reagan during the eight during the 80s, right? Right. And the, if you know anything about Lee Atwater, he was ahead of his time. He would have loved this era if he'd lived to see this era because everything is kayfabe. In fact, he, one of his most famous quotes was this. He says, professional wrestling is the most honest sport in the on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> he says, because it's, everybody knows it's bullshit, but everybody wants to be involved in the story. They feel like they're part of the story. Yeah. And that was... Like when I talk about engagement media and we're talking about like right now we have engagement media. I got this chat going right here and people I can read the chat and people can direct the course of our conversation right now. Imagine if you have the ability to direct the course of some like some shit that's going on between a macho man, Randy Savage and the Undertaker or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing my eras there. Oh, well, yeah. You, yeah. It'd imagine you, you can you can direct the course of a, a particular narrative and stuff. And, and Lee Atwater was saying it's an honest sport because it gives people exactly what they want. And he took that dynamic and he applied it to politics. And that's why he got two he got two uh, presidencies out of Ronald Reagan, because he gave them a narrative, a good guy and a bad guy. And it was all kayfabe, someone to hate and a good guy to beat the bad guy. Oh, hey, you know what they say, though? It's morning in America. Yep. And that's all professional wrestling is. That's all we're doing right now. Like Storytelling. I was, it is. And I was looking and I, some people are very, very good at it, but they'll never cop to the kayfabe. And the people who are best at it never do. Adam 22 is a master of fucking kayfabe, right? When he's talking about, oh, yeah, I'm upset that my wife fucked this black guy. And oh, here's the video. Go ahead. And I shot the video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his new one. Oh, dude, your new girlfriend's greater pussy fire. And yeah, that was yeah, Sean boy. Evans from, a, and I, I'm so sad for Sean because I like Sean Evans too. I love the hot ones. I think that's a. And great, he was gonna have a fun, like he was gonna date a porn star. Like that's every kid's dream, and he got bullied out of it. We talked about that on on Access Vegas last Thursday because a lot of these girls, well, everybody knows fucking Adam Twenty Two. We tried to have him on the show. I mean, I've been on really, it, but oh, yeah, it's. Jesus. 
Yeah, and and I I get it. <laughs> he is like he is like PT Barnum for yeah. like a porn so, like if PT Barnum was into porn, <laughs> he'd be out of twenty and with tats, he'd be out of twenty two. Yeah, it's just Adam's so shameless at it too. That's why everybody's like, I couldn't believe somebody would be like openly bragging about the cuck thing. And it's like, yeah, well, he's been in porn. He's probably done gay for pay. At this point, what can you say to him that's going to embarrass him? He's got. <laughs> You got nothing, man. You can't tell him anything. I'm like, that's a beautiful place to be if you're one of those guys. Like, I no shame. Yeah. And I'm uh, going to get paid doing it. Let's see if I can get. Well, so, so anyways, like as far as like Adam 22 went with the whole thing with with uh, with uh, Sean Evans, I'm like, I get it. Like, And I hate to do this because everybody wants to think he's not doing this on purpose. I'm like, of course he's doing this on purpose. Yeah. Look, what, what the hot ones has. 13.4 million subs. Mm-hmm. Blood talk has 112. This has less than I do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not, but I mean, no jumpers in the millions. Get Don't get me wrong. But like plug talk is only at 120, maybe 130,000 subs. Mm-hmm. And I realize subs are just a vanity metric, but like he, by giving him shit about the, the porn star that he, that Adam has fucked before <laughs> it's like all he's, he, now he has access to 13.4 million, you know, subs and people who, who really have some respect for Sean. Of course he's going to, why wouldn't you do that? But it's kayfabe. Yeah. And if it's one thing, if I call out Adam 22, like this is bullshit. If I call it directly to him, that's one thing. It's another thing if I say that and people who defend Adam, they go, no, it's not. Professional wrestling is real. <laughs> yeah. That's what it comes back to. And then half of those people are actual fans and half of them are bots that are paid for just to cheerlead that thing. That's the part that gets me. Even yeah. the fake is fake. Yeah. They're just uh, ruining it, man. Pro pro wrestling isn't fun anymore. After Bret Hart had to retire, after Goldberg kicked him in the head. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is the Goldberg get kicking him in the head. <laughs> Saxon Smith, both your work helped me uh, more than can be described. Oh, thank you. Zero. Well, thank you out. very much, sir. Oh, thank you. You're Take a- credit, though. You did 99% of the work. All we did was write some blogs and shit. Point you, so. you in the right direction, dude. Yeah. Uh, chest rock chesty. Uh, I will always support the work from behind the scenes, but hate your audience a little. T- a little. Too many people demand spoon feeding uh, and hand holding. Start by reading the books. I cost more per hour depending on the question yeah oh yeah well he's a good lawyer but i agree i agree the audience capture is horrible i'm seeing people in real time if you guys don't know this is how you take over people like this and it's like ruins everything like you'll rollo will sit here he's working on metrics i'm using you as an example Mm -hmm. and uh the audience will respond well if he does certain topics and not well if he does other topics and then eventually rollo's like well the audience is like this the customer's always right he starts doing what the audience wants yeah. And then you guys get into this weird feedback loop where you guys keep making them do shittier and shittier things because, you know, the mouth breathers are loudest and they want to do it. And then it's audience capture. You're basically telling them what to do. That's why those NPC TikToks were so hot, where everybody was just like, watch, I'm going to make her act like a retard by sending her some TikTok cash. And then the audience gets to the point where the influencer will do whatever you want them to do. And then the influencer has totally lost what it is that made them popular in the first place. And then their growth stagnates. And then what they have to do is they have to do some crazy stunts to win popularity. And then they end up putting their ass out on Instagram or embarrassing themselves publicly. Like that's, that's why you see shit like destiny right now. He's a great example of audience capture. He does exactly what his audience wants him to do. He ended up to the point where his wife left him for a twink, took $200,000 in tax money and whatever. (laughs) And now he's sitting there crying over his divorce on live stream because his audience wants blood. Yeah, And that's all he knows how to do right now is dance for quarters. So my my question is this, and I think I know the answer to this, but like how Yeah, I don't like him either. Is, well, yeah. <laughs> um, how does he make money? How does I, that motherfucker have the money to travel and do all like because he just was on with uh Jordan Peterson? I have two theories. Make, I was like, how does he make money? My first theory is rich parents. My second theory is DNC know. slush funds. That's my theory. Yes. Yeah. Somebody's noticing that someone, oh. ban- someone is bankrolling destiny and it ain't destiny who's bankrolling destiny. Yeah, cool. Because I'm seeing like you're doing this for a living. I'm doing this for a living. I recognize when people are doing this for a work. I will tell you exactly where my money comes from. It comes from five fucking books over 10 years. That's where yeah. my, my money comes from. It comes from working in the alcohol industry that I still have like two brands that are paying me like, you know, well, not as much anymore. Yeah, revenue. Exactly. It comes from revenue. You can tell the difference between types. And I've noticed this. Like, what's it? Vouch? The guy I'm who just got in not, trouble I'm for uh, showing off his porn folder on his thing. Mm-hmm. Rich Beverly Hills parents bankrolling him. Uh, who's the other one? 
not people Destiny. Think I, people think I am way more paid than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you're broke, you probably look like a millionaire. True. Yeah. Well, it's all, it's well, all standards. I mean, because I'm just I'm, I'm just doing taxes for last year and I'm looking at I, I didn't make as much money like last year as I did in 2022. Right. And I think that's sort of like a response to really what's been going on in the buildup to the election cycle. And I knew that this was coming. You kind of have to like sort of hunker down and like weather the storm because 2025 will be a really great year for us. But like 2024, they'll, the only way you're going to make 2024 really kind of pay off is you got to be tactical and look for, you know, what's going on as far as the zeitgeist of the, of the time. Right. But also come November 6th, everything changes everything goes back to not normal but it goes to something different for sure and so i'm beauty for me i'm still young it's all up i haven't reached i haven't plateaued yet so i don't know where my uh pivot moment is i was um i was look. i was talking to miguel from dollar cost crypto and miguel and i made the decision to like like abandon like florida and value attainment back in 2022 right there was a time there was yeah it was in hindsight it was actually the best decision i could have made uh, because I was going to take a deal with uh, with Patrick Bet David and Valuetainment, and basically all it was was the same deal he gave to Jedediah Bila, which is move your happy ass to Florida. You do everything. You pay for everything. You can use our studios, and we'll you know put put your shorts out and everything else. But that's about it. And they own all her her stuff. And every show that that Valuetainment had was my show, with the exception of Patrick Bet PBD podcast was yeah. my show. The only reason you know who Adam Sosnick is is because I helped him get his show off the ground. Same thing with Jedediah, who I love like a sister, right? She's no longer with Valuetainment anymore. What else did they have? They have nothing. No. And so I was looking, I was talking to Miguel about this and I go, you know what? Because we we come a long way since August of 2022. I should hope and, so. And I, was, and I looked at, uh, there was this one video that Patrick Bet David had done in June of 2022 talking about all these great things that they were going to do. And we got this coming on board and we're going to do these shows and we got this celebrity and we got all this. None of it. Absolutely none of it has panned out. If anything, they've lost shows as a result of that. Only thing he cares about is he, like, value tainment is just like a side hustle for, for Patrick Bet David. And I was looking at this and I go, I have done more than Patrick Bet David has done in the last like 18 months, maybe two, almost two years now. Yeah. Then, then, then this guy has done. That's all because he doesn't, you, you get lazy, right? Like you get to a point where it's like, you get, it's like, you know, show a, a do video, pick up check, right? It's like you just show up and you phone it in and that's it. Which is great and, if you're riding a trend, but if you're not, yeah, I can't ride a trend, especially not me. He can do it because he's Patrick Red David. He could show up in Vegas and do some like, you know, intensive or some like ma- mastermind thing or something like that. And people will pay for it, right? But 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 Roll Tomasi charges a thousand dollars an hour for consult. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't I don't think it's sustainable though. You know what it reminds me of? Publishing industry mm-hmm. with the whole self publishing thing. Like I was thinking mm-hmm. about this. Like a lot of people we know, I'll tell you offline later. Actually, mm-hmm. getting deals from Penguin House to go publish books, and mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what do they offer? They have an editor on staff, but you can hire an editor. They can hire. They can make book covers for you, but I'm like, you're a designer. I'm a designer. We don't need that. I'm better than anything they got. When mm-hmm. was the last time that somebody said, "Oh, my book just got published on Amazon"? Does that actually translate into sales? Not really. And yeah. they take a huge bite out of royalties. Mm-hmm. So what I'm thinking about with like the Access Vegas and the Sauce Nick is like, what are they offering in exchange? He's basically giving you four space and yeah. public, and all they offer is like, I can get you an editor for free. Well, I told. And in return um, for that, I take thirty percent of your sales. I told I told Miguel like when we were when we were leaving that meeting it, back in August and I'm yeah. like I was pissed off because I'm like I'm not gonna fucking take this deal I'm a bigger deal than Patrick Bet David is in this sphere yeah. like nobody knows who the fuck he is when I'm like when it comes to the manosphere and the red pill space so the only reason he even anybody even had his name on their lips is because he took a flight out to go see Andrew Tate in August that's that's all that you know, they wouldn't even know who he was if not for that and um. And I love how like how guys like that, you know, just talking about Zeitgeist, right? The guy just jumps on board that, you know, he would he would like people to believe that he, they were like high school friends, you know, back in back in the day. I was like, you don't even know who this dude is. Yeah. But um uh like when no, guys I, say they're a fan of my work and spelt my and pronounce my name wrong, like that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rion. Rion, Rion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rhinestone. Rhinestone. <laughs> yeah. If only there was a way to learn the pronunciation right away. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's uh, like I was I was talking to Miguel and I'm like, let's fuck it. Let's just do it in Vegas. And that's what we did. But um, then so recently we've been like kind of looking back on like what we've been doing for the last year, 18 months or so. And, like we have fucking come a long ass way in yeah. a very short time. 
And I don't like not enough people really realize that because I, even I don't, I have to step back sometimes and go, damn, we've actually done a lot of fucking work in this last time. And I was, but I had to compare it against like what, what the deal was with Patrick bet David back then. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't take the deal, but like when, <laughs> when Jedediah Bila like left value team and I'm like, I'm going to get her, I got to get her out of there. I got to get her in Vegas. And Adam Sosnick, I like Adam. I just don't like who he works for. I, I want Adam to come to Vegas and put him on my show and like do, do work with him. But I like, can't it's do gonna it. It's going to be like the Jerry Maguire thing, except for you take everybody and yeah. the goldfish. God damn right. Man. I'm on the sector, bitch. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, let me get to the rest of these here. Right quick. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm 32. Daring a 37 year old provides a ton of dating, dating, daring. You're daring a 37 dating a 37 year old. Why? Uh, provides ton, uh, provides a ton of value and great in the sack. Obviously she wants long-term slept with, of course she does. She's 37 slept with a 22 year old hottie recently, but wasn't nearly as good in the bed. Uh, thoughts. What do you want us to say? What, what are you trying, trying to, to do? Like, yeah, do you do? want us to say you want an attaboy? What's your, good what's your you? end? What's your end game? Yeah. You're 32. You're here's the thing. Here's what you do. Eject from both. Because <laughs> you're just now getting into your, you're just now hitting your prime. Why would you, why, why at the zero hour would you want to take on any commitment with anyone at this point? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's good in the sack. Okay. Well, fine. Good. Keep fucking her. Keep her on the roster. That's fine. But like, I would not do anything long-term, not until you're at least like 35, 36. And then even then, Start looking for women in the between the ages of like twenty five and like twenty seven. You know, well, I, I don't even like going that far in prescriptions. I just like have mm -hmm. abundance because I everybody I've talked to who settled down, it's always been from place like me. I wish I, I was dating a stripper her. when yeah. I decided I was done with it and asked my girl for like, hey, let's let's give this thing a shot. I put her on ninety day probation. That was like fourteen years ago. <laughs> I still yeah. haven't taken her off. I feel bad about that because she totally deserves it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think as far as like abundance is always going to be. The, yeah. And then once you're that guy, you can trust your own judgment better. Well, and then the other thing is like, you have to remember, I think a lot of guys get to be about 30 and they start saying, oh, women are really interested in me now that I'm 30. I must have been, something must have clicked. Like, yeah, oh, the yeah. women who are 30, well, are, you're still dumb <laughs> and they want a dumb guy. That's what they're looking for. They the want first time, as soon as the girls wrong. hit the epiphany phase, the first time they've liked me, I finally did it. You're the best. You're the, you're the best thing going. Are you kidding that's a scare. See, that's again, that's a scarcity thing. They're like, they think it's like they, they accidentally got lucky. They tricked a couple of girls into thinking they were hot. It just turns out. No, they, at this Looks point, like they want a guy to settle down with and have a kid with. I stuck to my guns and now look at me. I was perso I persevered. No, you didn't. You just, you were just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And you were still, you were still blue pill and you just didn't realize what your yeah. future value was. Slave mentality, be. man. Exactly. You it's like, you won't have that same attitude when you're 35 years. And any guy in any sphere other than sex would think about, wow, I'm finally successful. Let's ride this thing to the wheels fall off, except for with sex. Now it's like, oh, grab one, lock it down, done. Yeah. It's like, bro, if you're really that popular, enjoy it for a bit. Spread your royal oats. Yeah. No, I'm going to hit the wall. No, I mean, she's, I think she's the one, bro. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rolo. Can we please get a dialogue on when we tribally qualify women, e.g. Christians saying Christian women are what women should be and they're different from the worldly ones even though it's all the same firmware we just talked about kayfabe you want us to go over it again i know that's exactly what it is oh. uh our so, hoes are better than their hoes because they're evil bitches and ours didn't know what they were doing and it was the pickup artist's fault so I it's all to, good. i i i would i would be remiss if i don't throw this out there lila rose my favorite christian girl Seems to think that God created Adam first and Adam failed to protect Eve. Both Adam and oh, Eve were equally that. guilty. It's and then, your fault for not slapping the apple out of my mouth, Adam. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and I love it how this, you want to talk about kayfabe? This is like the epitome of kayfabe. Then she's responding to Sovereign Bra, which is Chase from whatever podcast, right? Eve was easily deceived because she was naive. This is why God created Adam to lead, right? <laughs> So what, what do I throw out there? I throw out um, Genesis, what is it, 133 or 433? Uh, for God is not to God. Of, oh, no, that was that was the wrong. One. Um, I got that. I, I threw this in there. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Uh, no, it's uh, Genesis. Uh, I think it's, yeah, 317. And, and he said, and to Adam, the Lord said, uh, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground you because of you. Uh, though, uh, 
through toil will you eat uh, the rest of the days of your life. So he just rubbed his nose in it, basically. So essentially what it is is Adam's first sin wasn't eating the tree from the tree. It was listening to his wife. <laughs> I don't know how many different ways to say that. And it's like, I love it when people go, well, you know, that's not what it's really saying here. Let me explain. I'm, I'm a theologian in the Orthodox you know, convention of 1941. Uh, this is what we were in. So these are the same guys that were arguing against Martin Luther. Tarzan complaining about your wife not putting out. Yes. Tarzan versus Superman. Dude, if right? they put in as much effort into disproving this stuff as they did into like being sexually attractive to their wives, they'd be far better off. People hate that too. Like I love throwing that one out there because people are like, Oh, and then the, I, I don't even Which, know. The Genesis them. or the Martin Luther one, that other, the Genesis one. But the, oh. the, the, then of course this dumb bitch is like, well, Jesus Christ made it so that men and women are equal again. And I'm like, Hmm, you need to go t read Corinthians because that is not in the Bible, you dumb cunt. But that's the beauty of Christianity. Now you can make a sect or a yeah. denomination for any reason. We were mm -hmm. talking about this before. Remember there was that group in the 1800s that was like the end of the earth is coming in like 1853. And then 1853 happened. They're like, well, you're praying saved us. And now they're seventh day evangelist or seventh day Adventist or whatever they call them. Mm. I love the other thing in the gen in okay so people go well where's how did Rolo know this in the in Genesis D dude I anybody can read it it's not anyone, behind a paywall <laughs> I I studied and researched all this shit for three fucking years go read my book god damn it yeah. <laughs> how does he know this oh uh, does he have a book of some sort mm, yeah. I don't know let's Hopefully there was a book you could research here's a link ah uh, ain't nobody got time for that who's got <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> um no, so when I when I throw that one out there, people I, they just agonize over that. I go, you know what? Adam's first sin wasn't eating the apple; it was from listening to his wife. God, I I just work here, man. I'm just reading your your scriptures, man. You tell me. <laughs> and, and they just agonize over this shit. But it, I'll tell you the most interesting thing about that is, like, I if you want to be a Bible literalist. This literally happened. There was a man and a woman, and they were in the garden, and they named the animals, and they ate the fruit and everything. If you are a Bible literalist and you are a quote-unquote creationist and this is literal truth to you that you have no other choice but to believe that adam's first sin was listening to his wife not eating the apple <laughs> that's the point they, these arguments literally what happened <laughs> that's what i love about these arguments there's always there's always the argument that they're giving and then there's the argument they're having and they can mm -hmm. never admit that second one the real reason they're arguing in this stuff it's either because i don't want to change anything or it's because i believe you know women are divine my golden calf has tits and then everything else is just like a facade to hide against that base emotion. Yeah. And we're uh, honest about it. I can be honest about it, but they can't. Josie, Tia Tamia, Tomasi, Tamia, Tomasi, stop talking shit about Brian. I'll, Who the fuck is this? I will talk shit about whoever the, this is my show, bitch. I will talk about it. anybody I fucking want to. And Brian Go knows. Get that Mia me. Khalifa that's got my glasses with no frames in it. Have her oh, talk to me. Oh, well, funny you should say so. Is she there? Oh, no shit. Hey. Oh, hold on. She's going to, by the way, uh, Mia Khalif, this chick is going to be on Access Vegas coming up, I think, either Wednesday or Thursday. Of the marriages in which women are also yeah, working and then also shoring up a lion's share of the household duties. Yeah. And that's why they're unhappy because now they're being burdened in two directions. But so what's the solution to that? Men showing up more on. The solution to that is you put lenses in your prescription glasses instead of looking like you want to be a library, a sexy See, librarian. Domestic duties. This pisses me off, man. Those are my lenses. And now it's become the <laughs> I'm the only fans whore who wants to look smart look. You know, it's funny. Okay. okay. So nobody knows that. Wait, wait, hold on. I got it. I have to do that. Set this up right. I have those glasses. I have. I, I actually got those glasses so that I can wear them on the neck. <laughs> like those grim, those big ass like fish fish aquarium last lenses. <laughs> I have those. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear. And they're they have actually like like clear lenses in them. There's no there, there's glass, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm so tempted to like knock out, the, <laughs> nice. knock out the lenses out of them. Like I have to use this. Because if I don't if I don't I will regret it. Here we go. But they won't because of freaking trad cons and neocons who are telling them that no, it's gay and beta if they do these certain tasks. It is, it is gay and beta most of the time. I agree. And with I also that. think <laughs> Michael Dude, Bowles and he's, is no gay and beta. He's <laughs> he's sitting here in a suit on a podcast beside a sex doll, seriously thinking about yes, most of these guys are gay and beta technically if you look into the scripture. <laughs> How can you look at that with a straight face, man? Uh, so, for instance, like the unemployment rate of men returning back to the workforce is very, very high right now, and that's. I, the thing about her is this, and, and I know she's going to be on the show, so I, I kind of don't want to set her up too much here, but her delivery 
you can tell that she's been like sort of um, like coached. coached by Destiny, yeah. right? Her delivery is very much like like Destiny. It's like rapid fire, it's machine gun shit. But you like if you stop her and you go, wait a minute, hey, what? <laughs> what you're what you're talking about is is bullshit. And let me explain to you why. And you you have to have everything like ready. Like you have to know what she's gonna say before she before like you can like stop her in her tracks, right? But I again, it's the kayfabe thing. It's like <laughs> Michael Knowles is well, yeah. actually taking this bitch seriously. Because men and are kind of pushing for this like revanchist return to just like older times. Okay, anyone who uses the term meninist, I laugh at you. Even though you claim you're not trying to turn the clock back, a lot of the solutions that meninists are advocating for just won't help men because the burgeoning sectors right now are overly feminized and stuff like nursing. Do you see what she did? The burgeoning sectors? What the fuck are yes. you talking about? You know, no, did you look? Hold on. Wait, wait, watch that. Watch that again. Okay. Watch where her eyes go when she says this. Look, look where her eyes go. Back to the workforce is very, very high right now. And that's because men and us are kind of pushing for this like revanchist return to just like older times. And even though you claim you're not trying to turn the clock back, a lot of the okay. solutions that men and us are yeah. advocating for just won't help men because the burgeoning sectors right now are overly feminized and stuff like that. No one uses the burgeoning sectors of this in a fucking conversation. You might yeah. write that on your sub stack. No one speaks like that. No one does. And the reason why she's doing this is because she's reading script. it from her cell phone. Who do you think is feeding her all this shit at the same time? Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's funny, too, because like you got bargain basement Mia Khalifa. Beside her is bargain basement uh, Taylor Swift. Oh. And then the third one, I think, is bargain basement. Sydney you are Sweeney being way TV. kind to Pixie. I don't know if I give Pixie Taylor Swift, but OK. Well, it's Walmart brand. Yeah, it's, it's no name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like dollar central that's i mean <laughs> come on they got their asshole out for ten dollars a month that's dollar not the worst started. thing that's it's happened uh, timu yes timu. 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 timu taylor, taylor swift yes. oh i'm not on this hospitality. podcast they're, they're and these industries are actually reaching out to men and they're trying to recruit them but a lot of men will turn them down and instead they're sitting on their ass they're addicted to opiates like over half of unemployed men are addicted to some sort of painkiller they're playing video games all day they're addicted to porn which is yes one problem but there's so many others they're addicted to porn, uh, like my OnlyFans, yeah. <laughs> and like Mia Khalifa. And Dude, feminism I is this telling men, like, I was like, I knew it was there. I didn't even know, but I knew. <laughs> leave your toxic masculinity behind, join a nursing career, join a teaching career, but they won't do it because of trad cons and neocons telling them that they're gay and beta if they do these kind of like unwarrior like positions. Okay, so this is bullshit, number one. Of course it is. Okay. It's kayfabe. It's, it's kayfabe. The OnlyFans whore is telling you how to <laughs> save men. Yeah, she's not wrong that they are on opiates. They are sedated. I've said this a hundred million times on this show, right? Um, you know, whether it's whether it's prescription drugs or it's weed or it's video games or it's porn or whatever else, but it is not the trad cons that are driving them that way. No. <laughs> they don't need the the trad cons are not incentivizing this with with by you know giving them the counter to this. No, they're doing this on their own because that's the incentive. But I do think that it's not just a matter of social construction. I think women are more nurturing. The nursing programs and teaching <laughs> programs have like put up. Okay, so this is like completely hacked. Like you can tell it like this is just chopped together. I'm sure there's way more that Michael Knowles had to say, but this is classic destiny shit. Like just chop up the little bits, make him sound like this stuttering, stammering dickhead, and then move on to the next thing. She sounds like she's a college fucking professor. About research of yeah. why men won't join these industries despite them reaching out. And one of the biggest reasons is because they feel like it's overly feminine. Do you think that's due to liberal feminism or due to concern? You'll notice that she's looking down to read this shit every like this is a, she's just a mouthpiece for destiny that's all she's doing she's re yeah. well, either that or she's reading from like one of destiny's like like chat groups or is like his uh his uh, reddit or his discord or something like that oh i should also point this out too did you catch did you catch the video maybe you did or didn't because you don't care about i this. never listened you, to you shit, yeah. i'm just gonna assume you didn't see this <laughs> it was uh ben shapiro versus destiny okay and it was on lex friedman's show oh and Okay, I've seen a screenshot from it and where they had like three high chairs. <laughs> that was Destiny, it. Destiny got put over a barrel on this fucking thing. Like, of Mr. I can't debate anybody if they're not a college kid, Shapiro. Lex Friedman, I hate you. I absolutely hate you. And I love you, actually, Lex, but I hate you for this one because you actually made me agree with Nick Fuentes. Actually made me agree with it. Like Nick Fuentes, the, you know, the racist. Yeah, I remember him. We know what he's about. He hates destiny more than he hates the Jew that is Ben Shapiro. <laughs> and I'm just like, how do you do that? How do you reach that level of like just absolute, you know, like contempt, right? 
And so, so Lex, of course, you know, puts this whole, you know, arranges this whole uh, debate between the two of them and destiny just gets owned. And the reason I figured it out, the reason why destiny gets killed is because he doesn't have a cell phone. Mm. There's no, there's yeah, no, he's no lifeline. It's like he plays. Is that your final answer? Would you like a lifeline? Like his lifeline, he does. His lifeline's gone. He is. He collapses when he doesn't have like the access to the hive mind. And uh, so when people say, "Oh, Destiny's a great debater," no, he's not. Take his cell phone away, and he's like no better than any other Spurg we deal with. It's just that he's got this this in instant rattle this off, rattle this off, rattle this off. And by the way, same thing with Ruslan, same thing with anybody, right? But I think if you're going to have a debate, like, because we already know the debate is dead, but like, if you're going to have like a blood sport debate, right? You need to have like parameters. You get to, t you get to have your cell phone. You don't get to have your cell phone. You get with your tablet. You get, you don't get your tablet. Are you going to rely on your own memory and be able to, you to deliver this shit? Or are we going to be able to just do this, you know, just raw? And and just you know mano a mano, Talk, yeah. Firing and, line, William Buckley. Yeah, only and there needs, gay and fake. <laughs> there needs to be. Uh, there also needs to be set topics to talk about because what will happen is what happens with uh, most of these guys is when they get in, they get backed into an ideological corner, or they can't like defend a particular point. That's when they filibuster and they move on to another topic, right? Uh, rather than actually sticking to the topic that they just got their asses handed to them about, because that was the preset thing that they were supposed to talk about. So like if, if people want to debate me, if they want to come to Vegas, fine, we're going to do it. A, we're going to do it live. B, we're going to have a set of topics that we're going to stick to. C, you're not going to talk over me and you're not, there's not going to be the, I mean, you can have a good discourse and a back and forth, but it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be a one-sided conversation. And C, we're either going to agree to have our tablets and our laptops sitting in front of us or we're not. So you tell me how you want it. I'll do it either way, but at least let me know ahead of time you're going to do it because I'm going to do the same thing. Crazy. Um, it's let me what, give yeah, it's mostly just the point of it. It's not the old days. I think everybody still thinks it's the old Christopher Hitchens debates where two people are making a point and yeah. the audience decides which one's better. It's not. Yeah. People don't not. understand like real debate is like kind of what you see on like the Congress floor. You have a certain amount of time to make your points and you can like, you know, surrender your time to somebody else who might know more shit than you do. And, and it's this back and forth. You have a time limit. Um, you have to know your shit and like people have to shut the fuck up while you make your point and then you make a counterpoint. And if you can't, then you can't. Right. Yeah. It, that's that's formal college logic debate that the debate team debate. That's what that is. And if somebody starts using logical fallacies and somebody points that out, that's on you. You know, you, oh, you're using slippery slope. Oh, you're using this, all that kind of stuff. And you make appeals to, you know, logical fallacies or whatever. And if people call you out, that's your ass because yeah. you're supposed to know that. That's part of logic. That's part of deductive reasoning. That's part of debate. Right. And if you never went and did college debate or even high school debate, it's like, you're not going to know this shit. So let me finish her up here. Um, no, I think it's just natural. I think the men, the men should work, you know, but they should maybe do things that they're more inclined to do. I don't think we need to conscript men to go become nurses wearing frilly little dresses. And why do you see that as putting on a frilly dress? Okay, see, I love this. How like you got to, you have to know that they are like cutting this up ruthlessly here because he probably made a whole bunch of other points and they, they, Stick to the oh, this seems ridiculous. Let's go with frilly dress. Dress to go into like nursing and hospitality because you're, you're using you're that example. Presupposing that it's feminine and gay, you're doing the thing. <laughs> it is more feminine. Yeah. You know, they have to put in laughter because you don't know it's laughter. <laughs> how do I feel about this? Uh, oh, that was the point. Yeah, the how do I feel about this? Yeah. Well, the. The idea is, well, first of all, this is bullshit. It's just a TikTok video. It's meant to just get a, to drive a reaction, to make this. To, the reason why she's putting this out now is because she knows she's coming on my show next. Okay. I get it. But we're going to, here's the difference. We're going to be doing a live stream and you're going to be sitting across the table from me and Mike. So. Dude, do the old pickup thing where, you know, where you take your phone, you put it face down. It's like, here, we're going to put our phones face down. Let's talk. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Can we put our phones down and just uh, have a conversation now? Yeah. Or yeah. Are you I'm a like, man. You're, you're a woman. Like, or do you need a lifeline? Yeah. Well, here's what I would have done. And the thing is, is like, you got to remember that she's all, we're talking about formal debate, right? She's also trying to, even with, I, I saw the whole show and I, that's how I know it's been cut up. But um, the, the thing that, that she's trying to do is it's a debate tactic, which is to frame, it's, it's straw manning, right? You're framing his argument to be whatever it is that you think is going to be like to, to prove your point. It's also um, begging the question, right? It's mm -hmm. in the solution is actually in the question itself, right? So 
when they say, well, you know, it's you trad cons who are saying that, uh, you know, being a, a nurse or a teacher, all these, you know, traditionally feminine uh, careers is, you know, gay, gay and French. Right. <laughs> and um, and they it, it, as long as they can keep it sort of in those within that context, they always win because you're just basically fo following along with them. But the thing is, is like if, if they were to ask me that question, I would say, well, it's not it has nothing to do with trad cons. It has everything to do with incentives. Yeah. Like guys don't want to be in those those careers because those are the careers that well largely women choose first of all and then second of all it's like why would they do that why would they sign up for a low-paying career like that so if you're going to cut like here's here's uh, mia khalif uh, farah if you're watching this <laughs> i'm going to wear those glasses um if you're watching this Understand that if you're going to come at me with this, I'm going to tell you right now that it's all about incentives. It's all about guys who they don't they don't want to take a low paying job. I can show you. I've got a uh, I've got a uh, what is it a, an infographic as to why there aren't any male teachers right now, and it's been that way for like going on ten plus years right now. There's not even women. They're, like men aren't even in education programs in universities right now. Because they're like, why would I do that? Especially if the the the, the, the disincentive is that you're going to spend eight to ten years to get a, a teaching degree. You got to learn what to teach. Then you got to have certification to teach. Then you're going to go and take a job at a high a public school high school in the United States for thirty six forty thousand dollars a year to pay off the student debts so that you can well, for the last eight to ten years so that you can so that you can be the teacher in the first place. No yeah. guys don't want to do that. You want to know why there's socialists in like uh, universities and high schools and why you got, you know, what drag queen story hours teaching your kids in high school? Because the it sounds like a great deal. Like socialism sounds great to people who aren't getting paid jack shit. <laughs> so like journalists, too. The only reason you could be a journalist now is if you're rich because they don't pay. Yeah. Well, it's it's like anything else, though, like. The, like these two, like both of these chicks, like if you look at like Mia Khalifa and uh, <laughs> and Taylor Swift, <laughs> well, Sarah, Taylor Swift is a, like Pixie's a little bit of a different story, but like Jasmine Jafar, like why the f like that you want to talk about professional wrestling and like kayfabe. Hi, I'm Jasmine Jafar. It's like, what was it? The iron, I'm the Iron Sheik. <laughs> yeah, she goes, I'm Jasmine Jafar. I'm the Iron Sheik. <laughs> a little on the nose. I'll see. grant you that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm the Iron Sheik. <laughs> no, you have to call me. That's my pronoun. Um, but no, uh, the, the thing is, is that when you're talking about, especially on this topic, it's like, if you're going to talk about like, what are incentives to get, get into a career? Why are you an only fans cunt? And you're like on this show, shouldn't you be making money hand over for the only reason you can do this show is because your only fans allows you to afford to be on here. I don't wonder where Jasmine Jafar's money comes from. I don't wonder where Farah's money comes from. I know where it's, I wonder where destiny's money comes from. I don't know, wonder where theirs are. And so to have these two chicks on there who are basically beneficiaries of this new sexual economy, mm -hmm. telling us why guys don't get, why, how come guys can't get into nursing and can't get into teaching? Well, why don't you? Well, because, because OnlyFans pays me way more money than I would ever get from those careers. There's your answer. Yeah. That's it. Downstream effects of that. Less chance of dating certain types of guys and other guys. Everything works out. From, it's all about sex. Except for sex. That's about power for some reason. Yeah. Uh, been, oh, been a while, Rolo. Just got my purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, or blowjob. Uh, <laughs> every time I see that. Have a girlfriend now. My 180 is a big thanks to you, brother OSS. Thank you. You are welcome, Christian. I remember Christian. Um, notice Patrick bet David name pops up in more in the algorithm. Of course it does because it's an election cycle. He really wants to get into politics right now. I would, not be, I would not be surprised if he doesn't run for office in some capacity at some point. Uh, I believe he may be trying to increase his popularity for future public office run. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, no one's going to vote for him, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, to think we used to sacrifice <laughs> to an active <laughs> volcano for better crops. How times have changed. How times have changed. Yeah. Simpler time. Simpler time. And a uh, rational asshole trucker who always posts. Uh, the you know what? Here you get that. The only true creationists of the Bible are the flat earthers. Oh boy. Uh, the creation story from Genesis to Revelation depicts uh, flat earth with a dome sky. Yes, and the firmament. I got it. Uh, ocean above it and fixed on pillars. Nice. 
Um, you know, if we believed in like what the old Japanese mythology, the whole world rests on the back of a giant turtle. <laughs> That's how you defeat Andrew Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of my element on that one. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I'm a teacher in the EU. The problem is not that it's a feminine job. It's the fact that it's subsidized by the government. No drive for innovation, no good structure and a ton of freeloaders. Mm, well, I, don't know, I don't know how it works in, uh, in the EU. But I will say this is that the reason why you you want to know why mo most of your teachers, I think it's I think we're up to 78. It might even be 80 percent of your teachers in the United States are going to be female from the time you're in kindergarten until you get to postgraduate school. That is if you go through like the public school system in the United States. And again, think about it this way. Why would a guy unless you're teaching like math or STEM, you know, uh, class or something like that that's gonna maybe you came out of the private sector so you could teach so you didn't start out to be a teacher but you came became one because you were like done with that fucking industry and you wanted to get into teaching right but um the reason why you'd only see like coaches as as men and like your shop teacher maybe your math teacher those will probably be the only men you see at at from kindergarten to your postgraduate work um is because Again, it's the, first of all, we wanted to put more women into education because we felt like it was like a, necess, a necessity after the post or in a post sexual revolution, you know, uh, education. But um, you think about it and you think about what you have to lose as a guy. You've got you've got well, at least eight years of college so that you can be you can get a master's degree and you can teach at the, even at the high school level even. And then you've got all just say on average, you're you've got what? 200,000, maybe a quarter million dollars in student debts that you have to pay off in a job that's only going to pay you 36 to $40,000 a year. Uh, and then you are at the mercy of your students and the female faculty right there. So if you say one wrong fucking thing, the last eight years that it took you to get to, into that teaching spot that pays you jack shit is now out the window because somebody said you sent an inappropriate text to somebody. Right? Not even necessarily that you said or did a wrong thing. You just have to be accused. Yeah. It's that's, that's the is. problem with the risk, right? You're like, oh, the odds of that are very low, which is true. But even if it's, but it's like murder. There's a very low chance you're going to get murdered. But if you want to get something on the news, a murder will get there. If it bleeds, it leads. And since I know I'm going to be asked this. Uh-oh. Um, yes, I have been tracking all of the female teacher. Well, I'm just going to say it, rapists, because that's what they are, the statutory rapists. Yeah. Uh, teach female teachers who have had sex with their underage, uh, under the age of consent students. This is an epidemic and it has been going on since the Pat Campbell days because Pat Campbell and I used to talk about this shit all the time. And we, we, we used to track it and I tracked it so often back then that I couldn't keep up with it anymore. Yeah, Frank Servi, has got his big, his brand is that now. Well, well, just just tracking nothing but like female like teachers who like sleep with. Yeah. Their students it's like yeah. it's like the villain of the week. <laughs> well, I, so I was I every now and then I'll like I'll I'll post these things and pop off about it a little bit and women will go well, this is this not all women are like that Alex from dates like well they are mm -hmm. when we're seven of seven rapists in and it is only what February eighteenth yeah for the if month it was a priest February, they would have been all over it yes it was a, if it was a bunch of guy teachers that's why a lot of guy teachers got kicked a, out if it was one male teacher who sent what seemed like an inappropriate text you would run that guy we would never hear the end of it yeah but here's what we do instead we get will costello and we get what andrew thomas and all these other motherfuckers who want to go and do these studies on incels and everything else and we really need to get into this because we're very concerned that these incels are going to be radicalized and they're going to be the next alex manazian or elliot rogers or whatever like from 10 fucking years ago right you can name maybe three incel four incel murderers in the last 10 years yeah, i can name medicine, george I can Sandini. I can Ellie show Rogers. you I can show you seven female teacher rapists in just the month of, of February and we're not even through February yet. So you want to talk about what's an epidemic and what we ought to be worried about and who why why is Will Costello doing anything with incels? Why is he not doing research on female teachers who sleep with their their underage students? Never going to see that. You know why? Because hey. the DHS and the NGOs and everybody who wants to censor us doesn't give two shits about that. They, they, that's a fucking epidemic and has been so for at least the last 10 years. No one's doing research on that. I'm doing research on that. There's no money in it. That's why. Yeah. yeah. All this stuff. I think people forget how much of this is, is like what pays and what is it that pays? Uh, I remember 
uh, Wall Street uh, playboy or whatever. He always did the financial things. He, if you want to sell something, you sell to women or to high status men. Because that's the only yeah. people that spend money. It's true. Liquor. Look at that. Vodka now. Women vodka. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember that, dude. That's You want to know why I was you want to know why I was so successful in, in the wine and spirits is because I, I knew female nature well enough that I could sell flavored vodka. Yeah. Before, I, oh, I saw that yeah. low, low <laughs> fat vodka. I was like, well done, Skinny sir. Girl. Skinny girl vodka. I remember yeah, that. Skinny remember girl skinny vodka. Girl. Yeah. And, and by the way, it's a low calorie option. Before I, before I start glossing myself, like flavored vodka basically sold itself like during like sex in the city years. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to do jack shit. Apple teenies. All right. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> please, once please the, drink more. <laughs> Kim, yeah. Kim Cattrall was buying it. And then somebody found out it's only 60 calories a, a swig. And they're like, oh, geez, sign me up. Yeah. Guys aren't buying booze anymore. Yeah. Hell, it's at the point that girls are, I think girls are going to be the primary consumer of football now with the way the Swifty thing was it's going. Starting, it's starting to get that way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let me see. I got one more of these. To get. Everybody's fighting for a piece of that $14 trillion uh, consumer trend. $14 billion, 14 trillion, yeah, MasterCard. Guys, you want to get red-pilled? MasterCard comes out with their annual credit reports. Women were, and this is like a couple years ago, but women are a $14 trillion consumer industry. Men are not even four. So if you're wondering why all this stuff is feminized, that's why you would have to, every guy on planet earth would have to quadruple his spending tomorrow to start getting male popular messages in mainstream media. And that's just a fact. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to be the bad guy. You might as well get used to it. Proof keep your teachers kind of centrism is a thing. Well, yeah. And just keep your kids away from the, uh, the teachers. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, one of the things that I keep seeing right now, and I, I, I hate to even draw a parallel to this because I, I see the um, guys like Alex from Date Psych, and I see guys like uh, Will Costello, and they're doing the, you know, doing these just quote unquote research and everything else, and essentially it's meant to sort of tear down the red pill. That's all it is. And the same thing, that's that's one side of it. The other side that I see, of course, is from the sort of the religious right, the moralists, the we, the moral fags. Let's just call them what they are. Mm -hmm. right? I think we're deep enough in the show. I can say that. what the hey, um, yeah. So I mean, that's what we used to call them back in the day, right? Um, but uh, so the moralists out there would like to tear down the red pill by saying, "Well, you know, we need to get back to tradition. We need to get back to to the good old days and everything else." And really, both of these guys, both of these elements that are trying to tear down the red pill right now, have no under no real understanding of what the red pill is about. You need it though? You can just make up shit. You don't really have to draw any. <laughs> I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to. Well, so like when when I see when I call out something like um, like Lila Rose, Lila, Lila Rose came after like uh, Justin Waller, like back in the day, like not, not gosh, how long? Ago oh, yeah, I, got, I still got the meme for that one of him. Like, I'm over this shit. <laughs> Had his Dana White moment. I'm, I'm not doing podcasts anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like so when I see that happen, I had you know, like Justin right after that, like that clip came out, he hit me up and he was all what should i have said like how do, how would i have um uh, defended against this or what would you have said and i saw you know i kind of helped him out a little bit but um the the thing is is like that was sort of like the shot across the bow i think because okay. here you have these here you have the the sort of moralist crew that wanted to really uh, affirm their own faith at the same time and then like sort of tear down the red pill as best that they could whereas you got um now you know, people come at us, but they won't, they won't say our names. They won't say anything. Those red pill guys, or they'll talk about Pearl, like Pearl, Pearl's the patsy right now. Right? Anybody wants to talk shit about the red pill. They say, well, that Pearl girl said this, like make fun of the Cowboys. Don't make fun of their horses, guys. That's not nice. <laughs> or you got like Andrew Tate coming out talking about, oh, I think I'm going to get married now. Do you understand? Like, it's, I don't know if people can really appreciate it. You don't understand the amount of shit that we, you and I both ate from, from the Tates from back in the day about how, you know, receipts this and receipts that. And now it comes to, comes to light that they've got like secret love children. And now just recently, I just saw, I don't know if, I wish I, I didn't have that video, but um, Andrew Tate's admitting to be being married, like literally saying my wife, this, and I don't know if that was a slip up or whatever, but he said my wife, or maybe he was talking about her in the future sense. I don't know, but I do know that he has a child. And I remember, I remember that cause as soon as, yeah, as soon as the uh, Interpol, Interpol came up for him, He's playing in the pool with his kids. Like, you can't arrest me, guys. I'm a good person. I'm a I'm a I'm a family man. No, you aren't. Yeah. Where the fuck is this coming from? Right. 
And I remember that they used to be just brutal with you. And me too, right? Oh, Rollo has a, has a wife and kid. How does he know anything about, you know, intersexual dynamics? So he hasn't been in the game in a long time. I thought, well, isn't I that the been... rule too about it, this stuff? Whatever you, whatever your insecurity is projected onto somebody else. Like that's how you attack. Mm -hmm. Darvo. Well, then, I mean, I have known, I have known Justin Waller long enough to know that I was there when his first kid was born. And then I was got a second kid too. I would do I, out of respect for Justin. I didn't say anything. I said, that's on him. He can announce that whenever he wants to, I'm not going to dox my best friend. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do. I, I know that, you know, he's got kids. I know that Andrew Tate has kids. I know that, that Tristan Tate has kids. And yet at the same time, they're throwing shit at you. I has kids married. <laughs> <laughs> well, destiny has a destiny has a kid too. Destiny. What? Not with maybe with not apparently not with Lauren Southern, but with some other some of someone else. I know he's got Sweet it. Jesus. I know they're just letting yeah. anybody have them nowadays. Bad news right there. Probably the same height by now. <laughs> God, <laughs> I, I just it's it's so hard to catch a break, isn't it? I mean, like I can be as built as I can fucking possibly make myself at 55 years old. And I can just I, I'm I am in better shape than like 90 percent of the people that are in the manosphere right now at 55. Yeah. Years old. Certainly better shape than destiny. Certainly better shape than than fucking chin bun and, and God knows whoever else. But whatever. Well, I mean, what else can you argue at this point? You can't argue success. You can't argue fitness. You can't argue. You pretty much got a pretty goddamn good life. I hope you don't mind me fluffing you. I know you hate when people compliment you. I got a lock on certain things. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Daughter's married now, I think. And they're happy as far as I know. Their marriage has lasted longer than most of the influencers shitting on you. Yeah. You like, know what? what are they going to do to you now? You're you're at the point now where there's like, is, I've never hid the fact that I had a daughter either. And you know why I know that? Because everybody went and looked her up and doxed her for me. So that's how, you know, I have a, you know, I'm legit. Yeah. You still have your hair. Like they can't even go after that. Like who's wearing a beanie? It's, like, and it cool. is, it's real. Look, see, I could pull it. It's not a fucking wig. God. The only thing I think I could get you for is your eyesight. Isn't perfect. You don't have 20, 20 yeah. eyesight. Yeah, I'm working on that. Yeah. I can, you know, it's funny. I, I can't have LASIK. You know how they have the eye surgery thing, like the laser Why not? surgery. You're trying to be a pilot? Or? No, I know. No, I am. Um, when I was when I was younger, like when I was like eight years old, I had eye surgeries because like oh. one of my eyes was pulling the other one the other way. And the way they did it then was they'd snip the muscle and then the other one started pulling it. So as a result, my eyes actually, you don't see it because my eyes naturally adjust. But one of my eyes looks up a little bit and one looks like down a little bit. I guess oh. it's that's why I can't play first person shooters. It like makes me queasy because I don't have like this, the perfect stereo vision that you need to do that. And, um, and so if I they, like, they won't do LASIK on me because they said, if they did, there's a possibility I can have double vision. I'm like, fuck that. I'll just wear glasses. Thanks. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I, I could wear, um, contacts, but I just don't, it's not fucking around. It's just, I only need them when I'm on the computer anyway. So I think it's a good thing on camera though. Every now and then I was wearing these, I take them off and my eyes look smaller. I realize they magnify your eyes. They make you look more photogenic. Oh man. If you look at the, uh, I should put it up again. If you look at me and the, uh, Dr. Phil show, I'm wearing my glasses, but I'm wearing my distance glasses and they look, mm -hmm. they make my eyes look bigger and stuff. And I'm like, I look, I look, God damn it, man. I look fucking good in that video. <laughs> yeah. Tap into that whole, that's yeah. my anime dad out there. God damn it. God damn Get him. It. You know, so I, and I was watching the chat when I was playing that uh, at the beginning of the show, and people were like, "When was Rolo on Doctor Phil?" Oh, Jesus Christ! I'm surprised. That's all I, I talked about last year. That's all I talked about. You know what's funny too? All the doxing that people do on you. There's that one video. I don't remember if you showed me or somebody else did. You playing for like Selena or something in like the late '80s, uh, early '90s in your oh, guitar? It was the triplets? <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, that video never saw the light of day. Yep. Yeah, nobody looked that one up. They'll go, they'll go and look for me when I'm playing Macbeth at like the local community college. They'll look that up, but they won't go find me on the party machine with like Nia Peoples and and uh, Arsenio Hall. That they won't look. I was 23 in that video too. No shit. Yeah, I should put that up. I actually I actually posted that, I, and I I I cannot believe that the YouTube algorithm picked that up. I got a copyright strike for posting that video. Like, <laughs> oh, this was on the party machine with Nia Peoples. How the Because I looked. Because I, I only have my copy of it from like my old VHS tape that I like I, I mastered. Oh, so that's not even a download. Well, that's it yours. Is, it is out there somewhere like the that that video. But I've never been able to find that video of myself with the triplets. It was in uh, 1993, I think. Yeah. People are like, well, who the fuck is he talking about? I, I played uh, I used to do session work for different like uh, 
musicians. And I had friends who would say, Hey, we got a gig coming up. Can you like learn this one song and can you play it on this show? And one of the shows was at Paramount Studios. It was uh, the Nia People's show. It was called The Party Machine is what it was called. It was sort of like an answer to club MTV at the time. Like, was, like you're in a club and you're dancing and kind of thing. Oh, like, in Canada, was, we had that too. We called it Electric yeah. Circus. Yeah, it was kind of like uh, uh, Soul Train or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 90s, right? And it was it was a show that came on after Arsenio Hall. So it was coming on at like, like midnight <laughs> or one in the morning. And this is in like <laughs> Los Angeles, right? I could, t boy, I could tell you stories. But if you saw that, if you see the chick that is playing the acoustic guitar in there, that was one of my notches. Just, oh, look at that. Just going to say that the, the bipolar one or the other ones? No, 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 no. No, but I was seeing the bipolar one at the same time that that was one of my notches. Fair, fair. Um, but uh, yeah, she was, that. they they are actually triplets too. Um, but no, I didn't get with all of the triplets. God damn it. Stop. Dude, see, this would be. I would love it if this was what the year was like right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is a really cool story about you doing mm. cool shit with cool chicks. Yeah. It's a great example for other guys. This is the kind of life you could have. It's not that you're some Superman or something from a rich kid or family or anything. It's, but no. it's not that now. It's us ranting about incels and Democrats. No, I am. Um, God, yeah, I, I love it when I read like, um, uh, bio well, it's not even biography. If you go and you read like some of these guys who are like these success porn hustlers, like these guys who have like uh internet secrets to you know making a million dollars, a millionaire mindset by God knows whoever, right? Oh, like Gary V and all them. Gary V, uh, who's the guy that uh Jeff Walker, the guy who wrote uh launch or stuff like that. That I keep like, forgetting who that guy is, but I remember the book. Like, can I give you if you're watching Gary V the rest of you, if you give me let me just explain something to you. You don't need the buildup. We don't need the Batman origin story. Okay, please. I don't care if you were born a poor, you're white and you were born a poor black child in the inner city. I don't need to know that. Just tell me what the, how the fuck do I make? What's your process? Show me your, show me the fucking, the template here. I don't care if I'm buying your book in the first place. It means I believe that you could actually teach me something so I could make some money. You don't oh. have to pitch me and say, oh, look, I was nothing. I used the secret and now I'm something. I don't fucking care show me show me how you did it that's all Dude. i would show me the process that's nothing bothers me more than that it happened i won't say who because this was like our behind the scenes thing but we were doing that where we had like a paywall set up we you know come in here do this thing and then one of the guys that was behind the paywall starts pitching again and i'm like do you not understand the funnels after they pay behind the paywall that's what you're supposed to deliver mm -hmm. now's not the time to be pitching even a better course down the line yeah. Or like uh, I was reading, uh, was it how to buy your time back or something like that? Mm. It's a great, great book. If you can just wade through the first three chapters of like, well, when I was 12 years old, my dad left my mom. And uh, so, oh, I don't fucking care. Your other book did that. The uh, how to write without bullshit. I was like, it's a great example because the first two thirds God. of it was such bullshit. And you're like, yeah. I understand why I don't want to do this now. Yeah. And then the last third finally had the things you're supposed to know. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Nuke, I can't believe people gloss over Rolo Tomasi. Hold my drink. I got I got to play a set compliance test. That was a <laughs> compliance test. You're right. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. Jews and Rolo's beanie. Thank you. Yeah, that's all they care about. <laughs> Jews and Rolo's beanie. Apparently, I'm uh, apparently I'm a homosexual now too because I happen to think that that uh, and that Jewish? that uh, yes because I happen to think that this Olympic track star chick that's making the rounds is like actually pretty hot. But she she looks masculine. She has muscle de muscular definition, and it's too much. So if you like this girl, then you are a homosexual. Do birds mean anything anymore? Like, do they? No, really. Yeah, it it, it was a compliance test. Okay, so what is okay? God damn it! I'm surprised you even know this, Nuke. Um, no, I fair, uh, he actually does watch when I when I swoon over all this stuff. So <laughs> it used to be my that used to be my mo. Like when I was in a club, like that's how I learned how to get laid. It, I, I could get laid pretty regularly when I was in my twenties because I figured out what worked for me. So it was, I mean, I wanted to be a rock star, right? I wanted to be in a band and I wasn't about the money. <laughs> it was about showing oh, up chicks. getting laid is what it was about. Yeah. Um, so my, my compliance test was this is uh, like before a show, once everything was set up and the other bands were getting ready to go and do their thing. Like we would usually play either like, I don't know a headline, but we would certainly be the one right before the headliner. Right. Um, and so there might be four or five bands playing in a particular night and it would be like at Gazari's or the Roxy or uh, as other places that we would play. And um, 
I would, if there was a hot chick and I was talking to her, I would like chatting her up or whatever. And I, I would say it would be right before my set. I had this whole thing set up. So I, could, I was so fucking poor back then. I could like women would buy me drinks. That was it. Because, but if I could afford a drink, I would nurse that drink the whole fucking night, mainly because I didn't want to be fucked up when I'm playing, but also because you can't <laughs> afford a second. I didn't know <laughs> money, dude. I lived in a fucking one studio bedroom apartment in North Hollywood. Um, so, um, so I would say, hey, watch my drink. I got to go play my set. And if the chick was still there at the bar watching my drink after I was done playing, I knew it was on. That's basically how it worked out. If she was gone and my drink was there or like if she was just completely disappeared, then I knew it was over. Yeah. But uh, that was But if she was still there watching the drink, it was like she she's she's invested. Let's go because <laughs> not back to my place because you don't want to see my apartment. <laughs> the Camaro. <laughs> no, I didn't have a I had a uh, I had an old Rock Z. No, no. But um, one of the, guys <laughs> the band lit right up. Had, yeah. One of the one of the guys I was in the band with had, had an IROC. Um, no, I had. Um, well, back then I had a uh, I had two cars. I had a pickup truck and I had my my uh, my cornet i have my brother and my brother people don't know this my brother uh is younger i have a, a younger brother and he uh to this day still does uh classic car and muscle car restoration really and so yeah he would build the cars and i would break the cars <laughs> <laughs> and so uh one of the cars that we had was a 1969 dodge cornet and it was a 383 board over to a 389 we had a holly double barrel carburetors i could yeah, i can give you it had headers it had an extra fuel because it sucked up gas so much we had to like put an extra fuel pump on it. um that was my that was my fun car but it was always in a work in progress and then my actual get around car was a 1979 toyota uh pickup truck with no tailgate so i had to have one of those nets on the back <laughs> oh the nets is that the, was that the same style that they they put 40 50 cals on now and drive around in africa well, it, has, and oh. it has it has a, it has a well it's it's not really a net it's like it's it is a net i guess but, but it's, it's not the same like one where like there was toyota but there was also datsun even though they're the same car or the same truck yeah, yeah. yeah. more or less, more or less. Yeah. a lot of my but friends it, had the datsuns the way i bought it, it i think i bought it for like fourteen hundred dollars and Jeez. that was a lot of money back then uh, for me anyways and uh but it didn't come with the tailgate so i'm like i couldn't afford a tailgate so i just put a net like one of those like pro oh, yeah the cargo what, nets yeah kind of thing and that was my that was my transportation car back then. And no tonneau cover, Kyle. No, a real man doesn't need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, no chicks ever roofied me. Thank you very much. <laughs> what the hell? No, I I I could pretty rely. I, I didn't. I wasn't much of a drinker back then because it was like I was too busy doing something at that time. Or I just simply couldn't afford to like fucking cocktails were expensive back then, at least for mm -hmm. me. Uh, women are spending $14 trillion, A, A, are you from Canada? Uh, we know they're not making that money. Their husbands, boyfriends so are, so men still have the power to pull it back, uh, which well, is why the red pill is such a threat. Mm. In fairness, that's less the case now. Now women are just going into massive amounts of debt. But yeah, that used to be the case where it was because they were the married ones. They made all the spending decisions. Yeah. Well, they, now they, what is it? 40% of women are single? yeah well something yeah like. it's going on the card it's not going on the man's account yeah well and then the other thing is like i think that one of the things that being on access vegas has taught me is that the chicks that i see on there that i'm dealing with on a daily basis who i love like sisters and in some cases their mothers too um <laughs> but they're not the average chick the average girls are the ones i see in the airport at Las Vegas, when I'm going through TSA and I go from T, I have to say this all the time. You go from TSA to your to your gate, just people watch. Put your fucking phone away for five minutes from you're walking from TSA to your gate, right? And look at the people that you're passing. And I would say, don't count the people who are overweight. Count the people who are in shape, because everyone is overweight. Everyone is a beach ball. Everyone is just sort of just plodding along. They're waiting at fucking Cinnabon. Oh, yeah, fat enough school. where it changes their gait. Yeah, they're waiting for Ben and Jerry. They're waiting for they're. It's just in, incredible, and like that's normal. That's a normal chick. That's a normal guy. A normal guy is probably sixty pounds overweight uh you know as is probably on his way to an early grave because he just doesn't take care of himself and i'm looking around and i'm just saying these are these are normal people and so when i go if i'm with 
occasionally they'll see one of these girls in the airport, but, but they don't, they don't fly commercial. They fly JSX. Um, but if you took one of the girls from Access Vegas and you just put her in this sort of domestic setting, and I've seen this happen before. This is a new trend, by the way. Ooh. You take a woman and uh, it's uh, Corey Yee, Corey, C-O-R-I-C-O-R-R-I-E, Yee, Y-E-E. Mm -hmm. She is an absolute fucking hammer. I mean, she's absolutely stunning. A 10, I, close, as close to a 10 on the, on the Tomasi scales that you're going to get, right? Okay. Nine and a half, okay? She has this, I don't know where this came from, but she will go and do these sort of candid, like casual videos of her walk, just walking through Home Depot, right? <laughs> or like, uh, or, or uh, I don't know, Walmart in the grocery section and stuff. And all she's doing, like, she's absolutely stunning. You can't take your eyes off of her, but it's meant, it's not meant to be on her. It's meant to be on the people who are like, just sort of casually around her, just going like, oh, just, just yeah, how she stands and, and, out. And I, I've, I've likened it to this. It's like taking a wild animal from the zoo and like putting them in a domestic, like putting them, let it walk through like a tiger and let it walk through your, your neighborhood kind of thing. You, you'd be like. Fish you, out of water. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, except for Bel-Air is fat people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that is just, and so I have to, I've gotten to the point where I have to sort of drag myself out. I, I, I have to say, okay, this is the Access Vegas world. And this is like Las Vegas airport normal world over here. That's why and, I can tell all these guys that are doomers about this stuff. It's like, you don't go outside, do you? Like even mm -hmm. in Toronto, we're thinner than the States, but not thin. If there's a Jays game plan, the BMI yeah. triples. Mm. Triples. Yeah. So yeah, I see, you see these people and you realize that's, that's what we've always saying. Remember the, the Pareto principle, 20% of men getting all the things. Right. It has never been easier to be a top 20%. Like the bar is oh, low. Yeah. Nobody's fighting you for that spot. Yeah. And so it blows me away. It's like, I have Myron and Fresh will show up and we'll do a show and, and I'm hanging out with eh, Mike's in pretty good shape too. You know, he's 46 years old. He's in, he's in pretty decent shape. He, I know he works out. Um, his girlfriend, you know, uh, Kylie is absolutely stunning. Um, and then like Myron is in really good shape. I think it was he 32, 33. I don't know. Um, and uh, fresh is mm, fresh is fresh. You know, he's not like in great shape, but he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's fresh. Fresh um, is nice. <laughs> but then I look and I think about myself and I'm like, I'm 55 years old and I'm in better shape than like 90% of the guys that I like, I deal with on a daily basis. And I'm, I'm going to keep it that way. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, I mean the the barrier, like the the barrier to entry, is not what I think a lot of right. people think it is. I also thought this. I don't know, maybe we'll get your opinion on this as well. Ooh. Once I started um, doing TRT, I uh, I understand. I know I know uh, Rich Cooper started doing it, like he did a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I've only been on TRT for one year, and um, I'm of the opinion that a lot of these guys would change their minds about themselves and about like the sexual marketplace and have a completely different outlook. If they brought their t testosterone level from whatever it is, 400 up to 800, just oh, double guaranteed. it. It would be night and fucking day. And they just don't, you, they just don't understand. They, yeah. Oh, it's, oh. Cheating. Oh, it's not cheating. Trust me. Go I, I will hit it from the other angle. Then you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. And the way I know this, even without the TRT thing, cause I'm natty. Mm -hmm. But um, I tell guys when they're like having problems dealing, like wife fights too much, she yells at the kids all the time. And one of the one of the strategies you tell them from the married or the red pilled side, start tracking her cycle. You don't have to like write it into a notebook, but, you know, count to 30, get mm -hmm. the app if you have to, where it tells you each day. And then notice, like when you guys have a fight, pay attention to the day and guys will start to notice her attitude. Mm -hmm. Like, OK, it's week before Shark Week. We're having a fight. And then like clockwork, they're like, holy shit. And yeah. so right there, don't tell me hormones don't change behavior. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's where a lot of guys, they stop taking like, these fights. They're like, she thinks I'm horrible. She calls me this. And then they realize, no, take it personal, man. It's just, it's just, and flows coming. It's what not it is. you. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think also like it, it has a lot to, like understanding like hormones and understanding like, especially the women's cycle. That's, I mean, that's part and parcel of hypergamy and everything that I've done for a long time. But uh, let me tell you something. I have had to defend dual mating strategy more than I have ever had to do it in, in the last like probably year and a half, maybe two years, because all this bullshit with like, oh, mate switching. And I'm like, well, let me point out every I'm from here on out. Every time I see this, I point this shit out. I'm going to point out every fucking example of that being bullshit and, and dual mating strategy being like the real deal. Right. Yeah. And dude, this is the one thing I think we fight on a bit, too, because I'm mm -hmm. I'm not as far along as the guys you fight with. But the dual mating one, like the girls moving on part, I, I see it enough where I, I clearly there's something there. 
But then again, you've got a lot of teachers. Yeah, I had to throw kids. this up. I re- Rachel Wilson figured out. He, he said Andrew figured it out about her 10 years ago. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just I, I see enough examples where it's applicable to a guy's life where, you know, the girl's working out six months before she moves on. David Clare's betaification process. So I, I, I either there's an underlying thing that makes that a case, but also makes those yahoos wrong. Mm-hmm. Or somehow this ties into yours. I don't know yet, but it's one of those things that we're kind of, we're not going to see eye to eye on just yet. Mm. But I think it's funny because like we never argue because so, we don't, we can't because everybody else is too busy being tarted around us. I know. And it's not hard. And I'll tell you the funny thing is, is like the stuff that I disagree with other people on most for the most part, for the most part, um, tactical stuff. Specific. Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, I was going to say, it just comes down to like specifics is all like for, for Mike, for example, like the only thing I'm never going to agree with him on is like the, the, fe- the friendship thing, you know, like, well, men and women can be friends, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're fucking them, <laughs> <laughs> but we're friends. Yeah. Well, and you're fucking your friends. So yeah. <laughs> that's sort of, that has the thing, right? Well, but we're friends. Yeah. Well, what do you do with your friends? Do you play Madden? <laughs> do you yeah. play Call of Duty? <laughs> they help you. Do they help you move? Yeah. But yeah. see, I mean, that's my whole problem with this space now is that stuff. I think that would be great. Us talking about the chicks we got or the, like Claudio is talking about the chicks he's getting, mm-hmm. the chicks we had. We could talk about specifics. Is dual mating better or is this one better? There is like a gold mine of space that a lot of guys could get value from, including us. And that's been drowned out by DNC slush fund people. One is like, let's sell people on the church so we don't get Trump elected. Yeah. Like, Fuck you guys. I just walk, it's literally like walking Jesus walking in, flipping the tables of the moneylenders, but the moneylenders are going over to the creek and kicking over all the stones that Jesus was sitting on with his buddies. You know, that's yeah. what that reminds me of. Or it becomes a <sighs> muddying becomes the waters, semantics, right? Yeah, and it's. I I mentioned this in uh, my my religion book. It's uh, the Orthodox paradox, right? Which right. is like I. It, that's not the way. It's it's basically the no true Scotsman argument right well no no real christian would do x y and z and i'm a real christian and a real christian is an orthodox eastern orthodox i don't know whatever the, oh chris just an ally card thing you just make yeah, your own denomination you can be whatever you want 67 that rush b believes in I, whatever you know, my family's I'm, baptist if you don't get dunked it doesn't count none of the other stuff counts the evangelicals are like no no literal word none of this parable shit you know, nobody funny. can agree on anything you know, you know, it's funny. i heard this one time i was like the guys oh do you have to be baptized to actually go to heaven or something like that and i go well you didn't see jesus tell the thieves on the on the cross with them say well surely the kingdom of heaven will be yours today if you can get down off this cross go dunk yourself in the river jordan and get back up on the cross again. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> martin luther I love when people talk about the the you wife, you can't just sex you. You're supposed to be nicer to her. And where he even had his sermon, where he's like, yeah, if your wife doesn't put out, put her on blast in front of the church. And if she doesn't do it again, go fuck the maid. And you, and I have Protestants arguing. Well, who do you getting that from? Martin Luther. Come on, Protestant. Argue with me. Who's the bigger authority next to Martin Luther? Maybe Jesus. Why? Why am I the one telling you? I'm the red pill fucker. I'm the yeah. guy you hate. Why am I telling you this? You should know this already. See, and they forget my grandfather was a uh, Baptist minister, oh, taught really? other ministers too. So it's like, we're not stupid. Yeah. We I, actually read the book of our detractors. That's the difference. The dual mating versus mate shifting argument didn't make sense to me at first, but your Steve Harvey show made it very clear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, yeah. When, when the Steve Harvey who makes the money that Steve Harvey does and your wife is fucking the bodyguard and fucking the, I guess the, the kitchen staff too, I guess the yeah. chef as well. It's like, that's not mate shifting. That's I want to. I want him to fuck me, and I don't want you to fuck me. That's that's what it comes down to. And I think the whole thing, like when, and I, this is something I will always lock horns with, and maybe with Mike a little bit, but like yeah, yeah. certainly guys like uh, Alex from Date Psych and all this stuff. The, there's a reason why mate shifting hypothesis became popular. It's because it's because Dr. David Buss decided he wanted to have a date a dating app or a dating site that he then never took off that he got like Alex Hormozy and he got like uh, uh, Andrew Huberman and some, all some of these bigger names on board to sort of give him like an endorsement for this shit. It never, you can, by the way, you can still sign up for the pre, the pre, you know, subscriptions right now, but that was four years ago. That's and the awesome. reason why when you go and you look at like the reason why you go and write a book like men behaving badly is because it appeals to that mentality. 
Mm-hmm. And he probably sold a lot of books, probably more than he sold, you know, for the revision of, you know, why women have sex or whatever the fuck it was in, in 2016, because that was his most recent book four years ago. Right. Yeah. And, and so now he wants to do, he wants to jump on board and get into all this influencer economy and everything else and probably made some money off of it. But the, that was my whole point is like, but he totally, he caught, co- it cost him his entire reputation. He, he took a gamble on it. And I don't think it paid off. Time. Yeah. And uh, very few people know about it that he's like, it's still a vet. I can go look it up right now. It's still online. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I saw that and I realized that's what he was pitching, I go, ah, oh, it makes sense now because you can't sell that kind of book and you can't sell that kind of quote unquote dating program um, without sort of backtracking and without sort of making women into something less than or more than d- a dual mating strategy. And so all this for, for, for years, for 25, 30, maybe 35 years, it's always been, you know, alpha fucks and beta bucks, Marty yep. Hazleton, um, you know, Gangstad, all the people that he or were students of his, even Gad Saad, all of them students of his at some point along the way. And he just says, no, we're going to do a 180. No, it's, it's, it's mate shifting. It's a social, like people who are so invested in a biological evolutionary reason for all this shit happening. No, it's actually social construction. The newest, hottest thing, man. Get out of here, you know. And I, and again, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, right? I feel like I'm the only one who sees this shit going on, but it's because it's a cult of personality. It's like, yeah. ta- it's like I still to the you, know, you know you how frustrating you are with with this shit too. It's like you can't <laughs> talk shit about Jordan Peterson. Oh, you're professionally jealous. Why do you have a problem with him? Why do you keep giving Michaela so much shit? Because I'm banging a gong that I've been banging since like 2017 that this guy's been full of shit. And you know, the only other person who agrees with me, well, besides you, is Vox Day. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody knows who Vox Day is anymore. <laughs> but to be fair, that's been a thing. We used to use that as a strategy for the longest time. People in the, the red pill from the old subreddit days kept demagoguing Trump or Peterson or whoever the newest male authority figure was. And so yeah. he purposely put out like Jordan Peterson is not your friend. Got so much hate. And then right there, you would just round up all the positive comments, ban them all. It was a way of cleaning house. Yeah. Have you noticed this? I don't know if you noticed this, but I don't know how long you, how often you go on YouTube, but in my impressions, I always get Jordan Peterson videos fed to me. You want to know why I still give him shit? Just because you guys keep feeding me this shit. You're spamming it. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I have found out is Jordan Peterson has taken the Andrew Tate formula of gaming the impressions on on uh, YouTube. Can't because blame him. It works. It does work. Absolutely. Because I, I can't get away from this shit, right? I have half, half of the videos I have in my collection right now from, from this. But what happens is this, is it's these other sub accounts. It's like, it's like Peterson Daily or it's like you know, Mindset Mastery or some bullshit thing. But it's basically it's all like bot accounts on Twitter, essentially. Yeah, it's nothing but shorts. It's a it's a, a channel that started maybe like six months ago, if that six months ago, it's already up to like half a million subs because all the guy does is rebroadcast Peterson videos hmm. exactly the same way that Tate did, exactly the same way that he was his affiliate. I don't, I'm wondering if they don't have an affiliate marketing thing through uh, Peterson Academy right now. I think they. I would. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you got to admit, Peterson Academy, Hustlers University. Same Come on. thing. It's the same, same as yeah, date psych and their scientific dating. Date no, psych dating. Is just on there too. Uh, My he's, pocket pussy has been divinely entrusted with whatever. <laughs> he is as big a shill as anybody else is. Well, like, not pocket pussies, just sex dolls, sir. I got one more video, and then I'll let you go because you've been a you've been a very good sport today. Unless you want to ask me some like stupid casual questions about nothing in particular. Ah, uh, let's, let's get me angry first. Let's round okay. me up. Show me Matt Each Walsh. Of your basic me. stance on abortion, starting with you, Farah. Go ahead. On a personal yes. level, I'm pro-life. I wouldn't get an abortion, but on a macro level, I'm pro-choice. Why would you not have an abortion for your own child, but you would permit it or even maybe recommend it for others? Same reason I've been vegetarian my whole life, but I don't force it onto others. Like, I have my own personal visceral reaction to certain types of behavior, such as hunting, factory farming, and even possibly abortion, but that doesn't necessarily... Oh, I am going to have to bring some p- fishing pictures with me. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm deducing got some a big sort elk of like moral you. imperative from that. Well, I should hope if you care about a bunny rabbit and, you know, you won't eat hamburger, then certainly you would care about a human being. And, I, and it seems like that's the logical connection. But doesn't that then seem to be saying, look, I would never murder my precious baby. But all you often poor black people, you can kill your babies. That's just fine. That's no, because I, I never I said it. I do it because I view it as murder. I said it's more of a visceral reaction. So it's unreasonable. You just think it's yucky. Yes. I yeah. found it yucky okay, when you yeah, open the doll's fine. mouth and put a cigar in it, but I don't think that's wrong to do. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was not my idea. idea. Look, I love what you just said. What a beautifully honest thing you admitted. You said, I find abortion. <laughs> and meanwhile, the chicken, like the, the World War the Kaiser one, just came Kaiser. out. What the hell? This is what gets me. Oh, okay, well, let me let it be wrong. And I didn't it, say I, wrong. For you, wrong for you. When we say wrong, we're usually moralizing it. The so process grosses me out. I find it gross to use a tampon. I don't use one. Yeah, I don't think sure. people shouldn't use it. What you've just articulated Fucking is what? something called the wisdom of repugnance. You just go on your prejudices a lot of the time. And I know prejudice is a really nasty word these days, but most prejudices are right. But that argument doesn't pan out because you just said I should do some sort of correctness and morality for my prejudice. But if I just said I enjoy getting abortions, like I love the process, it gives me pleasure but, the same but, way getting a tattoo would, you wouldn't then say that, that I should more like that. What is you gotta love that one? What do you even do with that? Like, what do you do with that? They try to throw a little racism in there, a little Christian versus abortion thing. All they're missing is the uh Westboro Baptist Church protesting this outside yeah. of the with yeah. a God hates bag sign. Yeah, yeah. And then meanwhile, I don't know if that girl is his girlfriend or something. She's on every goddamn show and she's in there with her. She's like the Red Baron back there with a fucking spiky, yeah. you know, World War One German hat. And then um, and then the sex doll. I, I have to I don't know. I, I like Brian because I've talked to Brian, you know, occasionally. Like he'll call me up because he wants to do a show. Um, but like when I see the sex doll there, I'm sorry. That gives me like that gives me like bad juju or some shit like that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Just, but um, like why? 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 See, now I heard a rumor. I don't know if this Why? is true, but apparently they used it for their prank videos and they keep it around as like nostalgia, which I don't know if that's true or not. They, but the they fact had, that he was a prank video channel and that's his start. Well, what's like how you? Joker used to do his, uh, what did he used to do? Like trailer renovations or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Then it became what's sad it? MGTOW because it paid better. But so, so let's see if we can bring this full circle. He's oh. got a cigar and the sex doll has a cigar. Yeah. And yet they all smoke cigars on the most latest uh, thing on Daily Wire. Like, are you thinking that Matt Walsh and them are fucking the sex doll off camera? No, but <laughs> sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Now, it's it's uh, your thumbnail. <gasps> <No>. <laughs> Stupid Governor, face. I swear to God, if you clip that, I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, okay, you I'm know, not I, better than this, Rolo. Brian, yeah. I love you, but like whatever podcast is like the price is right of these kinds of podcasts. It's like not true. I like the price is right. <laughs> put on a put on a uh, put on a costume and come on the show. Right. Just and if you don't have one, there's some there. You can just pick them up and just wear, I don't know, some Civil War reenactment outfit. If that's what you want. I wonder what comes next. Once like once everybody's sick of the shit, once the Adam Morsky wax on his nipples phase is over and people are past this, what's next? I hating yeah, Trump again, maybe or question. I, I so uh, that's a good question because I I I want to um I want to think things go back to normal after night or after uh, November six. They don't. The things that are going to change. It's this the whole situation changes. We're going to go back into a cycle of um uh, just uh, you know I, I this is what I hope happens. I don't know that this is actually going to happen, right. but the idea of uh going through the election cycle we're already there right now i i i called this out on rule zero like back in the day right it was like yeah. right i think it was in 2022 right and i said look by august of 2023 you won't recognize the manosphere I'm pretty much i think we're there right but yeah. now we're going to go through redef the redefining of the red pill phase which we already are right well the red pill is not really what these sons of bitches say it's not really like that it's actually uh it's just truth it's it's whatever they want to righteous mean, anger yeah, pretty like um, what was it? Uh, I know that Pearl is supposed to be going and doing some interview with Candace Owens and like she's like, what should I ask her? Right. And everybody's like, ask her why she doesn't go by red pill black anymore. Mm -hmm. She's like, what does that mean? She has no earthly idea. That, watching those two broads go at it. That, I would watch that. Yeah. She has no earthly idea that Candace Owens used to go by red pill black back in 2015 before Trump was even 
a glimmer in the fucking political process, right? So, of course, it's a joke. It's, it's meant to put, you know, Candace Owens on the spot, but she simply just doesn't know that because she doesn't have the background to know that. Mm -hmm. But I, when people saw my shows with uh, Dr. Phil, they say, why did you even bother to do that? Because you're, it's like you're, you're trying to teach a monkey to use an ATM, right? You're trying to, to educate these people who just simply don't want to be educated. Like when I'm when I was talking about like how um, women will say, you know, I don't need a man, but I want a man. Like to me, that's obvious because I'm doing these shows daily. I'm, and even the shows that aren't even my shows, I could go on fresh and fit. I can go on, on whatever podcast and the women say the same exact same thing. And they're looking at me like, what shows? Where is this happening? I don't know anything about this, you know. And it's just like you're just a, you're you're old and you're an idiot, but not that not so much that, but you're also not in, you're not seeing this happen. So mm -hmm. to me, it seems like I'm over exaggerating something, and I feel like I'm under representing it. Whereas the mean in the meantime, they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. But everyone says the same thing: Why bother? Why bother doing this? Why bother going and trying to educate these guys who don't care? about the data and the information and what you're doing rollo they don't care about that you know what they care about they care about a sex doll with a fucking cigar cigar in its mouth with blue hair or they care about drag queen story hour with destiny they care about that shit they care about whatever the blood sport is and i really would love to be able to get back to some more like cerebral shit right but right it's never gonna happen it's professional wrestling it's like me trying to be a college professor at a at a professional wrestling match what do we got here? Hang on. Lent is upon us, Rolo. See what I mean? <laughs> See yeah. what I fucking mean? <laughs> Sacrifice and suffer in the glorious house. The glorious house of gains. Uh, you are always welcome in the Republic of Texas. Ryan, if you come, please bring a large double-double. Jesus Christ, bud. Fucking rights. <laughs> Here's your Canadianism. There you go. I'll let you go. We got to get out of here. Um, what do you got going on? What are you working on? Dude, other than just having fun with that Tekken for pennies and writing that for what it's worth, I'm yeah. done. I'm tired of my third book. I'm tired of reading it. I'm tired of looking at it. It's for sale on Audible. It's for sale on Kindle. It's for sale everywhere. It's doing great. It's Good. actually really doing great. The Substack is kicking ass. Oh, um, yeah. For the well, most part, how is, that? How is Substack working for you? Dude, I'm. why did I not do that earlier? Right. Substack, way more for me than YouTube makes. Way more for me than anything. It's next to the books. I would say it's probably like my biggest money maker. Hmm. And then it's just the Patreon every week. How many, down. how many paid subscribers do you have? Oh, geez. I'll have to go look. I know it's like three to four hundred. I could go look it up. Three or four hundred? Yeah, around there. Pretty good. If you can get up to five hundred, I mean, that's like you can earn a living. I don't oh, have that. Yeah. I don't have as many paid. I, I re, Do you do nothing but paid like posts or do you uh, do the way I set it up is yeah. for every post I do, they're about three, 4,000 words and I'll do two thirds of it free and mm -hmm. then a thousand of it paid. And that's I usually see. where I skip to like the, the, the most misogynist stuff, I guess, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for mm -hmm. the most part, cause I, I treat it the same way I would treat the newsletter. The purpose of it is to drive people to, to see the book and know it's there. Right. But at the same time, I don't like the idea of somebody coming here and paying and not getting something for it. So I always try to, and that just means more work for me, right? Right. I looked at um, uh, Rob Henderson. He said he makes the lion's share of his living off of Substack now. And he is, was it? 347. I think, I think I should start calling him Dr. Rob Henderson because that I think he is now a, a, a doctor. He yeah. just Honestly, it. it reminds me of the old days. Remember back when Royce and them, they were all making money off of AdSense with their blogs. It kind yeah. of feels like a return to form. Yeah, well, that's yeah, I'm glad too. like I've never made money off of my WordPress blog. I always had it for free and it was always meant to drive traffic to to my books. Right. Yeah. Um, now I'm almost ready. I'm not going to abandon my my blog, obviously, because I still want this stuff to be up there. But I'm writing like regularly on Substack like once a week. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing free posts, but you have to be a member to comment. Oh, so okay, maybe, yeah. I think maybe I'm going to go to paid, but I'm going to do what you do. Like give them the first third or so of the, of the article for, you know, free. And then you got to pay to, to read the rest. And I don't think it's asking them, what do you charge? What's your, what's your monthly? I got to go check. I think I made it nine ninety nine or something. I, okay. I have to go check again. What's your, what's your yearly? I just multi, I didn't even, I just made it like 20% less than if you did it month by month. Oh yeah. So I did the same thing. I didn't uh, say so like, Oh, there we you, go. Monthly is $5 yearly, 45 founding member, 97. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not pretty, bad. Like it's pretty, pretty. It's like a cup of coffee. I can live with that. Yeah, I um, I I, I probably should charge more. Ooh, I um, did change the I did change the format slightly though, so I've switched it now to, um, because you know the email it'll send like the first thousand words to the email like a newsletter. Mm-hmm. So I kind of summarize the entire thing in a small bite sized form, and then I put like the expansive part after it as the paid section. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like yeah, if you just want tidbit you, wisdom have here. You- have you considered doing the podcast side of it too? Cause I know they were offering podcasts. Now. I saw that I might move I red morning over here. I'm only cause that's my thing, right? I know everybody talks about being canceled and that it is a real risk. So instead of making 10 grand on this platform or that form, I just try to make like one grand on 10 platforms. I spread the risk out and I worry about putting everything onto Substack Cause then if it goes away, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I I tend I hate to say I I would like to believe Substack is like an honest you know they're they're they do this in good faith, but the problem is is the bigger it gets the yeah. less good faith it becomes. So right now they have this mission statement about hey we let everybody say what they want to and yeah Google do no evil, and I of course people have sent like I think it's rugby and Sam Botta sent me these uh these articles about how like Substack is they're they're still sticking to their guns right now right now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because I see these uh, these articles written probably like Huffington Post or the Atlantic or something like that about how, oh, the Substack is giving, uh, you know, white supremacists a platform to say whatever the fuck they want to say. And and Substack like they did with YouTube with the like, apocalypse. You go fuck yourself. Right. Then you go okay. do what you want to, um, which is great. But uh, I think you're going to start seeing oh, you want to see p- predictions for the future. I think hopefully I hope Substack stays true to their mission statement. Um. But again, the bigger you get, the lights like lifestyle creep. So you start having to like make for me. It's not an if for me. I'm thinking of when. And like I said, that's why I like it all spread out. They can cancel me on any one thing and it'll suck, but it's not going to like, oh, dear, how do I afford rent? And none of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Here's my question. So, you know, my paid subs, what's your open rate? My open rate? Yeah. God, I'm I'm shooting 40 percent right now. I have to look at you guys in the audience don't know. That's the rate like for every post you put out. How many people who subscribe to you actually read it? I just put one out yesterday, so this is probably not a fair assessment because it's only one day old. Well, you can uh, always just use the 30-day open rate. But oh, okay. the, the reason I bring it up, too, is because back in the email newsletter launch days, most people were expecting 5 to 6% oh. open rate. Oh, if Jesus. Were good, it was 12%. Yeah, I got yeah really- that's what I mean. And guys yeah. who are like, like the best of the best were getting 30-some percent. So my most recent one... Um, which I po- posted just yesterday is at 36% opened and that's in yeah. one, that's in less than 24 hours. So again, I know you hate when I fluff you, but realize these are like superhuman numbers. Stellar numbers. Well, I, I get the, so the one before that was 39 Yeah, and that was like, that was on February 10th. That was seven days before that. Like Tanner Guzzi, AJ Cortez, those guys with like hundreds of thousands. They don't get this. They, they don't. don't. Get that, yeah. I have, um, and then Sarnovich I also doesn't have, get this. Nobody gets this. January 30th, my third one back, 47% opened. See, now that's insane. That's probably almost, like the tide for the top I've ever had. Yeah. And this is something, this will be something that'll cheer you up whenever you're feeling sad about all the people running up the flag. Now I wish they would pay me. <laughs> you know what? A portion of them will, and that's fine. Yeah. But that's the point is like all this bullshit you see. I keep thinking of this number, that open rate. 40% of these people, which, you know, it's a decent sized one. I think I got like 30 or a couple thousand people on there. What's your what's your, what's your mailing list look like? Uh, well, My mailing seven. list is 17 and a half, 17. Oh, yours is huge then. Mine's only it's just shy of five. Oh, so mine's at 17, but then I've been I've had my blog up longer than yours. Oh, yeah. I've, of, I'm not expecting my, to be your level. You've been 10 well, years. All, to of get my, there. all of my email list is over the course of like 10 or 12 years. So um, and then that's also through which is collected in aggregate through um, uh convert kit so yeah. that's where i get my my email list and me i'm fine this is slow and steady a thousand new people every year you know <laughs> well, the whole thing about a thousand loyal customers i strict to that and these yes, four thousand people five thousand people here these are the ones i, I get a shit about like if you have if you have like a four or five thousand like uh email list that's like huge and i'm yeah. like at 17 or actually more like 18 now and it's um, all organic too. That's the other flex is that you can say I, I didn't pay right? you to take anybody else's list. That was the first thing these fuckers said too. Like when I first started Substack, they go, "How did you get seventeen, man? You must have bought all those. What's fucking wrong with you, Roller?" I'm like, "Dude, do you know? Do you know who I am?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, people never see this. This is the actual work behind the scenes. 
yes, like people who actually give a shit. And these are the ones I always think about. They're the only reason that I'm still here and haven't left left the manosphere. Yeah. Yeah. You'll know when I leave the manosphere because yeah. I'll just be here at Substack. Oh, nobody it. will be able to make up content from their Toyota yeah, yeah, Tacoma yeah, anymore. And everything, I was going to say, and everything will collapse. Uh, Atlas shrugged. Rolo shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's get out of here. Uh, anything else you got going on? Just dread. Honestly, if you guys in your relationship or if you just like it from a cultural anthropology perspective, Red Pill has been about the two main things I've seen over the last decade as dread and frame. And I've got books on both. They're out on audio. So I'll even read it to you. So how yeah. great is that? It's on Amazon. You can't. I, miss won't. It. I will never. Read. I won't do that. I'm above all <laughs> more respect for myself than to read to you, you cretins. <laughs> <laughs> so one of these days I will. I just don't have the patience to fucking do it. Uh, it's a slog. Um, it's a slog. Anyways, I will be in Las Vegas starting on Wednesday. We will have uh, this. I forget her last name. Ava something or other. She is the chick that uh, was fired from her school job because of her OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. um not the not what's her name the the she's an, another girl and she's going to be on on the show we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one with her then we will also have jasmine jafar and farah 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 i hope you call her khalif like mia accidentally she, i will laugh so hard the problem is I, I everybody calls her that and she's like too used to the joke i need to have something that's fresh oh fair enough um so but the glasses it is glasses it is right yeah um but she will be on uh farah and um farah and jasmine jafar i will be the iron Sheik. should i wear a turban and those glasses then i could be the iron Sheik. you know how to fold a turban i could probably figure it out yeah it's not it's it's, it's a little bit tricky you have longer hair though so you can probably pull it off I know, I know, that's what enough, makes it fill up by the way i have enough seek friends that could probably show me how to do a turban yeah they had military issued ones I used to wear them. Yeah. it was pretty funny <laughs> We're all going to pretend we're professional wrestlers. I'm going to be that. Uh, and so that will be, let's see, we will be doing a two on two. It'll be myself and Mike uh, uh, versus Jasmine Jafar and Farah. Sunday, Sunday, uh, uh, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Um, so that'll be in Las Vegas. And then we will also have them on Access Vegas. So we're going to mix them in with the girls, uh, assuming they're still good to do that. So it'll be Farah, Jasmine, and uh, probably about seven other girls that we're going to have on Access Vegas. You will not want to miss that one because those will be our ringers for that show. Um, like so that be going. And then um, I, well, there will be no show on the 29th because I will be too busy driving from Reno, Nevada to Las Vegas in my new place. So I will be in my, my Las Vegas residency for the year. <laughs> I've decided that I'm going to be spending more time in Vegas and like visit Reno instead of the other way around because I'm doing too much stuff in Vegas these days. And I kind of need to be there for all the projects that I'm working on. So uh, my wife and I have decided that we are going to move to Vegas. We already have the house i've been there actually got the keys about two weeks ago and we're going to be bringing the dog so we have to that's going to be our big move week so that's why i won't be there but the following week i'll be doing uh babes in toyland again with uh mike sartain that'll be on the 9th of march and then we've got some other things coming up we've got uh, uh james sexton coming in in the month of march i think he's going to come in about the middle of march so we're going to have him in we'll probably do like several shows with with james nice. so yeah, that's going to be a good one. I'm good to reconnect with him, too. And uh, don't let him running up the flagpole. It's all I got to say. I won't. And we'll be sure that we talk shit about all these people who want to uh, Matt Walsh. We're going to we're going to correct Matt Walsh on that show. Ruthlessly correct. Anyways. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I will. Oh, by the way, I'm still doing the show every Sunday and people go, oh, well, when are you going to do it? I'm going to be doing this show from Las Vegas starting what March 3rd. March 4th, something like whatever the Sunday is after that. So uh, the Sunday after March 1st, the first Sunday of March, I will be doing it from Red One Studio in the Southern Command Center in Las Vegas. So uh, look forward to that. That's You want to talk about work? That's what I got to do. I really got to set up the studio and get everything going. But you guys have seen me do it from there. That's where I'm going to be doing this show uh, for the foreseeable future, unless it's the summer months, and then I'll be back up here. So anyways, that's what I got going on. Uh, Ryan, thanks for joining me once again. We, we I've always got time for you, brother. Occasionally, you know so yeah, so it's fun. All right, guys. Um, I will see you guys next week. And uh, don't forget Access Vegas coming up on Thursday. And I will see you then. Bye, guys. <laughs>
need to feel you on top of me It was my first time Ain't nobody got time for that But I was just a kid when we met and went to bed It was my first time What do you expect from me? I'm breaking up the rules now in the game I've got some new tools Please do the same Time came by and went Over like a matchbox stereo Time to get my thoughts now and let go Time to give me a ball To give a woman vote is like to let a monkey fly a plane. <laughs> Very dangerous.